Hey guys welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto was forgotten myth devil of fairy tale dimension and had pervy Sela. Movie. You were born to bring an end to this world, don't you ever forget that. A voice rang in his mind. It is also at this very moment that he opened his eyes. He stirred up slightly as he got up from bed and headed straight toward a broken mirror. Silently, he looked at the reflecting image of himself. Of course, he was still the same. A demon. What was he thinking? He let out a sigh and made his way toward a small box labeled, Ramen. Looks like I'm out, he murmured silently as he looked down at the empty box. Guess I'm gonna have to go to the village and refill my stocks. With that, he grabbed a black jacket hanging onto a chair and opened the door leading outside. His outfits consisted of a black uniform style jacket with an orange zipper that featured several buttons on the waist and sleeves allowing him to fold up the left sleeve and rear coattails, giving him easy access to the pouches on the back of his belt. He also was wearing a red armband on his left arm. Lastly, he wore loose orange pants tucked inside studded black boots. He reached down his pocket, pulled a white headband and quickly wrapped it around his forehead. Without wasting any more time, he rapidly jumped down from trees to another. Once on the ground, he checked his surroundings to make sure none of the villagers were there. A he smirked as turned around to see three armed villagers were standing before him. The sight made him chuckle a bit. They were afraid to death and yet. What do you plan to do with these gardening tools? Naruto asked aloud in a mocking manner. Don't take us lightly, demon. We will have your head today. One with enough courage replied back. If I were you I wouldn't risk my life just for that. Now, why don't you leave me alone? It was more of a statement than a question. You better leave before you get hurt. Uninterested, Naruto gestured to them to get lost. Like I said, don't take they rushed forward but stopped midway. You. One of the men fell flat on his rear while the others stared fearfully at Naruto. Not even a second later, something hit them. It was like a huge force of gravity applying on them. They couldn't breathe properly nor could they move at all. They were being crushed by his demonic aura. Naruto grinned at them. What did I say? Stay put he said and released them from his aura. Shortly after their release, one of them threw a shovel at him. There is always Naruto titled his head aside, evading the tool as he dashed toward the attacker. Someone who is stupid enough to try that. He focused his inner energy into his right hand, created a small black orb with a blue lacing around it and aimed it straight at the man's chest. Rasengan. Right after the collision, the villager was engulfed into a large dark ball then sent flying against a tree. There you go. Naruto uttered without any emotions and regained his composure. Who's next? He asked and created another Rasengan. The remaining two villagers gulped audibly at his threat. They both knew if they tried anything they wouldn't come out of this alive. We will definitely get you back for that. They grabbed the unconscious guy Naruto knocked out and cowered in fear. How many times had he heard that? This sure was never getting old. Naruto scratched his head in confusion. He couldn't remember any other ramen store other than the one he usually steals from. He jumped down the rooftop of a building he was currently on and walked through the crowd of villagers as if he was one of them. But of course, he definitely knew they would recognize him. And to say, he wasn't the hardest person to spot especially with his orange attire. The more he walked on, and the more he could feel them distancing themselves from him. He sighed lazily and knew exactly what was awaiting him next. How dare you show up your face here? It was another one of his haters, as he expected. What is it again? The blonde asked in a neutral expression as he faced the person who called out to him. Women. Children. Let us men take care of this thing. You shall return to your home until we finish dealing with it. He shouted as if he was the boss around and pointed his finger at the blonde. Just as the man ordered, all the women and children were quickly much out of sight. Now, now, let's not get rough shall we? You will only get hurt for no reason. Naruto stated as he crossed his arms. Obviously, he did not even care about them getting hurt. As far as he was concerned he could care less about their lives too. Whether they died or lived, it truly didn't matter to him. He closed his eyes and remained calm as more villagers surrounded him. No one needs to get hurt. Yeah. Just need to leave me alone and I'll overlook your behaviors. Naruto tried to reason but it didn't seem to work his way. We are not giving you anything. You don't even deserve shit. One snapped back at him. I see. It's not gonna be easy I guess. Naruto pondered, bringing his right hand under his chin. 
Well, it wasn't too surprising at all, considering he already knew the outcome. This was going to end up with his other way as always. Violence it is. Before any of them could make a move on the blonde, Naruto quickly spiked up his demonic aura and slammed it down on everyone surrounding him. The villagers were fast on their knees within a second and their breathing became harsh from the pressure. Naruto stared down at them with a smile forming on his face. What a pleasant feeling it was to see them submitted to him. However he wasn't quite done yet, he needed to make sure they understood the pain. The pain he felt from the past whenever they beat him within an inch of his life. The pain of being beaten like trash. You are the lucky one. He extended his arm and threw it in a random direction. His finger landed on a rather fat man, standing in front of his spouse and child. Naruto walked up to the concerned man, crouched down and released him from his aura. The fat villager fell on the ground, breathing heavily as he stared at the blonde. Naruto could clearly see that he was terrified to death. You damn sadist, you would dare make me suffer and let the others watch me die in front of them and my family. He shouted, very much like he expected it, the blonde did not show any compassion in his eyes. You're wrong, I'm not a sadist at all and I'm not going to kill you. You have to accept and not complain about the things it throws at you. This is just exactly what life is all about, isn't it? Naruto stated plainly. Just like how you all made me live hell on earth all those years ago. I totally came to accept it, and now you will do the same. This was life. You deserve and accept whatever is given to you. Die. The man yelled as he pulled out a dagger from his coat and aimed it at Naruto's face. Not a bad attempt. Naruto caught his hand and gave it a hard twist, causing him to drop the knife. You really thought you could kill me with it? Naruto slammed him down. You really tried to kill me in front of your son? Isn't that a bad example you're showing him? He turned his gaze at the man's son. As he did so, the wife immediately covered her son from his sight. He would accept it. You are a demon. Of course he would accept the devil's death. The villager shouted at him. Then will you accept it if I take the life of your son? Naruto got up, much to the villager's fear. Please do not, I'm begging you. He cried and hung on Naruto's leg as this one made his way toward his family. Naruto did not respond and simply shoved his grasp on him in a simple movement. Years ago, when I begged, nobody stopped beating me. He let out, ignoring the man. Please do not hurt me and my child, she whispered, begging the blonde. Naruto stared down at her and the child. Despite her begging, he simply could not feel any sympathy at all. He knew they had nothing to do with him but even so, he felt nothing as he stared down at their figures. The woman had not much time left as Naruto kept marching forward. She needed to make the ultimate sacrifice to save her son. You may take my life, but please, do not hurt this child of mine, she sobbed along and held her child tighter than ever. Well, they do say that saving one life means another has to die. Naruto waved his hand and summoned forth a black sharp stick through air only. He held the weapon in the air and stared one more time at the woman beneath him before bringing it down on her. Don't take it personally. I will protect you no matter what happens, she whispered in attempt to comfort her child. I will protect you no matter what happens, upon hearing those words, the blonde suddenly let the weapon fall and dropped to his knees. I will protect you no matter what happens. Those words, it was sickening him for some unknown reason. It felt like his head would burst just from hearing it. He painfully clutched his head as everything around him started blacking out. Ah, he tightly shut his eyes and shouted in agony as a vision came to his mind. He couldn't properly see the scenery happening before him. However he still managed to catch a glimpse, a very small one. Everything around him was destroyed and pretty much turned into ashes. He looked up and saw a giant black dragon standing above the massive destruction. The beast was inhaling air in its mouth and ready to annihilate everything below him. He also saw a severely injured red-haired woman standing before him. I will protect you no matter what happens, she turned and smiled weakly at him as she embraced him. From there, everything turned back to normal. Reality came back to him. The vision stopped and his headache ceased. He slowly opened his eyes as he breathed out heavily from this little trauma. After a few seconds, he quickly regained his calm and stood up. He starred at his surroundings and noticed everyone was stunned at his sudden burst. Get lost, he murmured under his breath. 
With that, he freed the villagers from his aura and silently walked away. All the villagers stayed frozen as they watched him take his leave. They all knew stopping him now would lead to their deaths and they could not afford to risk it. Surely not today, at least. The fat man rushed over his wife and son, relieved none of them had died. The woman embraced her husband then looked at Naruto, who was still walking ahead. She wondered for a second if he felt some sort of sympathy toward them. However, that thought quickly left her mind for good when she saw a red or a shaped as a fox surrounding him. Now in possession of his box of ramen, Naruto decided to head home right away. He was tired and needed to think about what happened earlier. He didn't understand why he spared them after that minor mental outbreak. I'm too damn weak. He thought out aloud as he threw the box of ramen on the grass. He hated it when he showed any sign of weakness. He needed to be strong at all times so he could live on. The strong lives and the weak dies. That's all there was to it. After a moment of silence, he eventually was able to clear his mind and calm down from his previous thoughts. He picked the box of ramen he tossed just then and jumped up the trees to get to his shelter. Finally home. He mumbled to himself as he looked proudly at his house. It was a small shelter on a tree made of possibly everything including tree branches that acted as a roof. It was in a terrible state and barely holding. He entered his home and immediately shut the door behind him, and headed straight onto his bed. He rested there for a while before getting up, having forgotten something significant. The traps, I completely forgot to activate them. He thought to himself and stepped outside. There was totally no way he could be at ease without setting up his traps. The last time he forgot to set them up, some random assassins hired by the village made it through and tried to kill him. Obviously, they were unsuccessful in the end but still, he sure wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. All right this should do it, he said as he finished preparing the last one. The traps installed by Naruto were very simple. They all consisted of a long wire almost impossible to see with the naked eye. If anyone were to come in contact with any of those wires, then they would be met with multiple skunais flying towards them at an incredible speed. His traps were efficient against assailants. However, they weren't meant to kill, but simply to leave someone injured. I have come in regard to your request. A pink-haired woman bowed in front of an old man. Her name was Ikagura. She had long, bright pink hair which was tied on top of her head in two large buns. She was very light-skinned, and had beauty marks underneath each eye and wore red lipstick. She wore a long, slightly loose white kimono with a red stripe in between two black stripes around the waist as well as a red triangle at the bottom of her dress decorated by flames and skulls motifs, opened at the top, revealing her shoulders and a bit of her cleavage. Where is the rest of the Trinity Raven I claimed? The old man, also known as the head of the village asked. Judging from the look of the assassination request, it isn't necessary at all for the three of us to come. Therefore, I came by myself, she replied calmly. Fine. But you better carry your job till the end. I want that demon gone by tonight, he ordered and turned his back at her. He doubted her assassination skills, but seeing the confident look on her face made him believe she really could pull that off by herself. Surely, my blade never fails me, she stated confidently as she stood up facing his back. You're dismissed. The woman bowed at him once more before taking her leave. Damn demon brat, this is your last day on earth. He let out a laughter. Ha 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 ha. This is your end. His laughter quickly stopped when he heard his servant coming into his room. She was a late adolescence with black hair. Upon her head was a white band which separated her hair, framing her bangs from her hair below the band. Worn upon her forehead was a small circular symbol with a small dot on the inside and surrounded by several dots around the top. She wore a black traditional Japanese shrine maiden robe held to her body by a red neck lace. A red and white sash scarf was tied to her waist, she also wore long-sleeved gloves on her arms white stockings reaching up her thighs, and the bottom of her ankles was strapped with the strings from her shoes. You may leave the tea on the table and go home, Sela. He regained his composure and spoke in a mature manner. I shall take my leave now then. Sela nodded, and left the tea on the table as he said before leaving. The night was coming. Naruto stared outside the window, looking out at the lights coming from the village. As much as he hated to admit it, he couldn't deny the fact that the village was very beautiful. He stared on for another minute before returning to take care of his ramen. Once his food was ready, 
he wasted no time and sat on his bed with his bowl of ramen in his hands. He leaned in and sniffed lovingly the perfume coming from his ramen. Wonderful. There were no words to describe it. He let out a foxy grin as he grabbed his chopsticks, more than ready to dig in. Itadakimasu. He spoke aloud and put a handful of noodles in his mouth. So good. He complimented as he poured more into his mouth. Eating ramen was the best. It was the only thing that brought him happiness in this life. Maybe life was not such a bitch after all, he thought so. Time to wash all the dishes, he sighed as he grabbed the empty bowl he finished eating and headed outside. Once outside, it took him around five minutes before arriving at the riverside. There, he started washing the dishes quietly when suddenly something caught his attention. There was a presence nearby him that he failed to notice since he came. He stopped whatever he was doing and approached this mysterious presence. Just in case, he hid behind the boulders of the river without making any sound and looked out. He was surprised to find a black-haired teenager bathing. Who the hell was stupid enough to invade his property at this time of a day? Did she have a death wish or something? He thought to himself. Naruto revealed himself to the girl, not liking one bit the thought of someone on his property. Hey you over there, he called out, much to her surprise. At that, the female teenager turned around at the voice calling her, and immediately covered herself up by diving further into the river leaving only her head out. Who's there? She called out in a frightened tone, only to see a blonde around her age. The one she recognized as the village's pariah, Uzumaki Naruto. Hi, she greeted him sheepishly, her face shading in pink from her current situation. Naruto was taken off guard at her greeting. Never in a thousand years he would have expected someone to do such a thing, and coming from a human even less. He waited on top of the boulder, giving her his best glare to scare her off. He expected her to run away at that but she didn't, causing him to threaten her. You better get out of here before you get hurt. He said in a cold voice. Humans are not allowed to bathe here, this area belongs to me. Uzumaki-san, Naruto's eyes widened in shock as she spoke. How did she know his name? Who the hell was she? A lot of questions about her were running through his head at the moment. Naruto removed his top and dived into the water. Who the hell are you? He asked as soon as he popped right back out of the water. Sela, she replied to him and turned her face away while blushing. It was the first time in her life someone walked on her butt naked. Stand where you are. I have things to ask you. Naruto warned her and looked down at her. Sela nodded in understanding and got up to walk away from him. She couldn't help but feel a little tense after all the rumors she heard about him. A small part of her kept telling herself that maybe Naruto wasn't truly a bad person and the villagers were only overreacting. But even so, she didn't want to take any chances and stay with him. She got up ready to leave but Naruto caught her by the wrist. I said I have plenty of things to ask you, he stated and pulled her toward him. Let me get dressed then I will answer your questions. She slapped his grip on her away as she quickly covered her bare censors and her special place. Naruto scoffed and turned his head to look away as she stepped out of the water. Don't you dare run or I will kill you. What is it you want to know? She asked as she dressed up and looked at him over her right shoulder. How do you know my name? He asked her in a serious tone. He wanted to know everything about her. If she knew about him then she was a threat for sure, and needed to be eliminated. Leaving a potential treat aside will definitely bring him the end of his existence and he didn't want any of it. My parents used to own an orphanage. They would take in any orphans and raise them until they were adopted. You were part of my parents' orphanage, I still remember you because of your whiskers on your cheeks. She looked at Naruto, and saw him looking at her expectantly. She nodded and continued, Of course I saw your name on the list of the children, that's how I knew about it. So it was your parents that owned that orphanage huh? He asked her to which she nodded. Why did they kick me out then? He asked with a bit of venom as he recalled the past. Sela shook her head in denial. You're wrong they would never do that. I know my parents, they were good people. They even adopted me as well. That's not what I remember. I was taken by some villagers and they told me I was kicked out of the orphanage because they found out what I really was. Naruto yelled out and released a bit of his demonic aura causing the atmosphere to tense up. And from that day on, I was beaten nearly to death every day. And the only reason they didn't manage to kill me was because of my powers that kept me alive. This isn't what truly happened. My parents went back looking for you, they ran to every corner of the village but couldn't find a single clue of you. 
They even knew about the rumors of you being a demon but even so, they kept looking for you. They really cared about you. She explained, but the blonde wasn't having any of it. There was no way he would trust a human again. Not after what happened in the past. They cared about me until they found out the rumors were true. After that, they didn't give a crap about me. If your parents really did all that then they would have found me right away. And how do you even know that? You weren't even there. Naruto shouted back at her, clenching his fist in anger. He swore, if she was lying then he would kill her right on the spot. Sayla swallowed the lump in her throat heavily, and held her chest tightly with her right hand as she looked down. She hated to recall this memory, it was aching her heart every time she thought about it. Finally after a minute she spoke up reluctantly as her eyes started watering. I know all that because on that day. Naruto's eyes widened as she started crying. My parents were executed in front of my eyes for taking care of you. Censored it up, that is how life is. Stop complaining about it. Naruto told her, his bangs covering his eyes as he turned away from her. Now go away, before I change my mind. Can you really say such a thing? Just now, you complained about your past life, you can't move on, that's why you hate everyone around you. Her tears continued falling down her cheeks. Naruto hated to admit it directly to her, but she was right. Over the years, he'd convinced himself to accept whatever bullshit happened back then but deep inside him, he knew he still couldn't accept it. He still held a grudge toward anyone from that village. I've moved on and come to accept it, now go away, he yelled out. You don't need to force it upon you, I can clearly see it, Sayla wiped down her remaining tears and spoke in a serious voice. Pathetic. Naruto replied back in annoyance. Sayla glanced at him once more before walking away. She knew Naruto was still suffering from what happened back then and still hasn't moved on. The reason why he became the way he is now was simply because he still couldn't let go of the past. She stopped when she suddenly remembered something she overheard at her workplace before coming out here. Tonight, an assassin will come after you. Naruto looked at her surprised. What? I work for the chief of the village and I heard him talking to a woman this afternoon. He hired an assassin to kill you. Sayla told him as she began walking away. You work for him huh? Naruto appeared behind Sayla and held a kanai under her throat. How'd I know you're not part of this as well? I work for him as a waitress. I'm not part of his business under the table with you. Sayla said, not flinching one bit. I will kill you. Admit it, you're in this. Naruto pressed the kanai harder against her, drowning a small drop of blood. Her answer did not change, much to his relief. He let go of her and walked over his belongings. You're a good person. Sayla looked at him as she wiped the slight blood off her throat with a tissue. But know that I will kill you if you're with them. Naruto glared at her over his shoulder, his blue cerulean eyes turning red as he did so. Your parents died because of me, you should hate me and not try to help me instead. Nothing will change if you try to help me you will only make things worse for yourself. Humans or demons, it doesn't matter to me, I want to believe in something much greater, Naruto found himself unable to talk upon hearing that. That's what my dad said to the village before their deaths. With that, Sayla walked away, leaving a speechless Naruto. Idiot. He finally let out. Once she was out of sight, Naruto put on his shirt and headed back home. On the way, he kept thinking about what Sayla told him. He found himself very annoyed at her parents' deaths for some reasons. Normally, he wouldn't care about someone's death but now it felt different. He somehow cared. Damn village, I swear I will kill every corrupted soul there. He suddenly broke out of his thoughts when he felt a killing intent near him. He looked up and saw a pink-haired woman dressed in white carrying a katana. Naruto concluded it could only be the assassin Sayla warned him about. Are you here to kill me? He asked earning a smile from her. Yes, that was definitely her. I didn't expect you to be able to sense my killing intent. She jumped down and bowed. Her eyes focused on her target. I thought I was just supposed to kill an actual demon and here I come across a man. I might look human to you but I sure ain't one. Naruto warned her by releasing a bit of his anger, much to her amusement. You're a cute one, hoo hoo hoo, she chuckled under her forearm. What is your name? She asked. Before asking someone's name you should introduce yourself first, Naruto replied nonchalantly. My name is Ikagura from Trinity Raven. I'm a professional assassin, I've come to kill you under my client's request. Ikagura unsheathed her sword and pointed it at Naruto. Shall we begin? 
Name's Uzumaki Naruto. Remember that before you die. Naruto shouted and rushed at her. Likewise, Ikagura took a fighting stance and swung her sword in the air. Mugetsu Ryu. Yasha's empty flashes. Before he could comprehend what happened, Naruto was on his knees with multiple slashes on his body. Impossible, he uttered as he fell down with his blood painting the ground. This was rather quick. Ikagura turned away, sheathing her blade when she suddenly found herself dogging under a powerful kick. The blonde she'd cut down just a second ago had somehow recovered and assaulted her with punches and kicks. She ducked under a powerful kick, her eyes widening at the vicious wind that passed over her head. If a kick like that would have landed, she highly doubted she would have been able to wake up for days. Hell, it probably would have ripped her head off. The blonde newcomer continued his punches and kicks without even giving her time to counter. I need to fight back, thought Ikagura as she kept dodging every single blow coming from Naruto. She quickly slashed at her opponent, causing him to stop and back away. Interesting. I like it when my opponent takes time to go down. Ikagura stepped forward in a flash and tried to slash horizontally Naruto's head, which failed terribly as he leaned back. Naruto then threw a round kick at her stomach, sending her a few meters away. You're pretty good, she complimented. Naruto waved both his arms in the air, summoning two twin swords. Requip magic, huh? She raised an eyebrow at him. Whatever you call it, Naruto replied, holding firmly his twin sword in front of him. Say, what kind of magic do you use? She asked. What makes you think I use magic? I told you I ain't human. Naruto started running toward her, both his swords pulled back. I use something called curses. Heard of it? He yelled out and swung from her right with his left hand and her left with the other. Curses? Ikagura said to herself confused as she countered his attack. Without slowing his momentum, Naruto twirled himself into a spinning couch and kicked her legs. Ikagura lost her balance, falling to her left as Naruto jumped in the air and brought his blades down to strike her. Seeing what Naruto was up to, Ikagura picked herself up with the help of her sword and dashed at him at an incredible speed. Mugetsu Ryu cross slash. While in midair, she threw her sword forward at Naruto, to which he dodged by moving aside. Hoo hoo hoo. She chuckled, knowing it landed. Naruto groaned in pain while landing on the ground as her attack began taking effect. Within a second his chest was cut, spraying blood slightly. He knew he managed to dodge on time and yet, she must be able to slice through the air with her sword. Naruto thought as he observed that blade of her. You're very surprising. No one so far had been able to live after this attack. Ikagura amazed at the blonde's tenacity. However this is where it Ikagura's eyes widened in shock at the sight in front of her. The wounds inflicted from her previous attack were healing themselves right in the spot. She watched in amazement as his healed wounds. Incredible, you have a healing self ability. I will be able to use my sword at my heart's content. Let's see about that. Naruto dashed forward and swung his right blade vertically at her. Ikagura blocked his blow with her sword and attempted a kick directed at his right. Naruto backed away and threw away both swords, causing them to vanish on the spot and focused his curse power into his right hand. Rasengan. He slammed it on the ground, creating a large screen of smoke. Ikagura closed her eyes and focused magic into her sword. It's pointless. She stated and sliced through the smoke, causing it to clear itself and reveal Naruto's position. Razen Rangan. Naruto dashed at her with a Rasengan on both hands. Ikagura smirked at him and raised her blade forward. Garura flame. She yelled aloud and poured magic into her sword. With that, a large torrent of flame coming out from the tip of her blade was shot at Naruto. Naruto quickly dispelled his Rasengans and braced himself for the upcoming attack. R. He groaned out as the fire burned him. As soon as the fire died out, Ikagura ran toward the blonde and attempted to slice his head off. Naruto caught the sword in his right hand, much to her surprise. Caught you. Naruto smirked at her. Rasengan. Naruto formed a Rasengan with his free hand and slammed it against Ikagura's stomach. Damn it. She yelled out as Naruto applied more power and sent her crashing against a boulder. Tough bitch. Naruto panted as he saw his opponent struggling to stand up. Ikagura was clearly pissed off as she looked at him. The guy just ruined her beauty and was giving her a hard time. It was a mistake on her part to take him lightly. Had she known it would be this difficult then she definitely would have brought one of her two idiots partners to end it fast. I will make this place your grave, 
she wiped the blood off her mouth and came to Naruto at full speed. Naruto regained his composure and summoned two kanais. This time instead of engaging in a sword fight, he threw them at her as a distraction to form another Rasengan. Ikagura easily deflected the kanais and continued making her way toward him, keeping the same speed all along. Mugetsu Ryu. Death Strike. S shit. Naruto didn't manage to finish on time and received a deep cut on his abdomen. Blood quickly gushed out from the wound and Naruto fell down. You sure were irritating. She said with a bit of venom. Time to die. She held her sword in the air and brought it down to pierce his head when suddenly, the blonde's body beneath her started glowing in red. What is this? She thought aloud. It will take more than that to kill me. Naruto flipped himself and kicked her in the stomach. H how can you heal so fast? Ikagura, frustrated, jumped back to put more distance between them. Your last attack was very powerful, it hurts like nothing I've felt before. It's gonna take a while before it heals up completely. Naruto ripped his shirt off and showed her the wound. Ikagura's eyes widened as she watched his wound closing up. She observed the phenomenon for a few seconds before speaking. Naruto Uzumaki, how about we join force? She asked him, thinking it was a better option to have him join her rather than fighting and risking her life. If Naruto kept regenerating each time she cut him then there was no way she could win in the long run. Don't joke with me. How can I join you after we just tried to kill each other? Naruto shouted. Her proposal was without any doubts the most stupid thing he ever heard in his life. Look, I will even lower my blade down if you don't trust me. Ikagura said as she dropped her weapon down. You have too much potential to be killed. Naruto thought about it for a moment and refused. I have no intention to join forces with anyone. I will not benefit from it. Ikagura shook her head in denial. You don't need to join forces with anyone. If you join my small organization you will work independently. Naruto gave her a curious look. What do I gain from joining you? Ikagura smiled slightly. Her plan to get Naruto to join her was working pretty smoothly. Money. A lot of money will be at your disposal. Naruto remained silent for a while before nodding. Joining her was probably the best thing to do at the moment. If he could buy tons of ramen just from joining her then he would do it for sure or maybe not. All right, I will join you. Good. I will tell my client that I killed you. Ikagura grinned and picked up her sword. Let me gather my stuff then we can go. Naruto told her as she nodded and walked ahead of him towards the village. Ikagura. What is she couldn't finish as Naruto stabbed her in the back with a kanai? W what are you doing? I thought we had an agreement. I told you, didn't I? There is no way I will join forces with someone. Naruto's voice was cold as he dug his kanai further, causing her to scream in pain and lose more blood. Damn you! Ikagura uttered before falling down at Naruto's feet. Time to die. Naruto stared down at her helpless form as he grabbed her katana. You were the strongest person I've fought so far. I guess I'm flattered to be the one, hoo hoo hoo. She chuckled and closed her eyes, ready to accept her fate, which never came in the end. Actually, I'm not gonna kill you. Go back to the village and tell them not to meddle with me ever again or I will kill them all. Naruto let go of her sword and walked away. Having mercy on your enemy will cause your downfall, she warned him. I'm not showing any mercy. You will serve as an example for the village to show them not to mess with me. Naruto stated in a serious tone. The next time we meet I will definitely kill you, Uzumaki. Ikagura got up and used a piece of her clothing to stop the bleeding from her wound. Naruto chuckled slightly at that. Feel free to try again, human, but if you are, be ready to face me at full power. With that being said, Naruto released a powerful energy from his body. Ikagura was immediately brought to her knees as soon as it hit her. What is this? Ikagura thought to herself as she struggled to stand. She'd never felt something this powerful in her life before. His aura was so powerful and so evil at the same time. What are you? She asked as she backed away from him even more. The next thing she saw suddenly caused her to scream in horror. She didn't know if she was dreaming or not but for a brief moment, she was able to see a giant fox with nine tails standing above Naruto. I told you that I wasn't human. You've got to see it at least. Naruto made his way toward her, at which point she backed away even more. The demon I truly am, Naruto focused his remaining curse power and created a Rasengan. However, unlike the other times, this one was so much bigger. Udama Rasengan. Get away from me devil. Ikagura's voice was filled with so much panic as she kept backing away. 
Gua! She cried out when she was engulfed into a large black sphere and sent flying deeper in the woods until she was out of sight. A knock was heard at his door. The elder man smiled to himself and headed toward the exit door. Before opening, he checked who the newcomer was from the door's window and saw none other than Ikagura. Such a pleasure to see you again, Ikagura. His happiness quickly vanished at the sight of Ikagura. The pink haired woman standing before him was in a terrible state. She was a mess, and blood was all over her torn clothes. Nonetheless, he was hoping she still managed to get her job done. The mission was a failure, the target was a lot stronger than I anticipated. Ikagura bowed in apology before walking away. What is the meaning of this? I paid you double already and you cannot do your damn job. You are the best assassin out there among the Trinity Raven. I won't accept failure, he yelled out in fury at her. Ikagura raised her sword and stabbed the man on his shoulder. If you aren't happy then ask someone else. She pulled back as she continued walking away. While I'm at it, one of your workers warned him of my arrival. Pardon me. Who would do such a thing? Tell me who that person is. The elder man demanded. Who's this person that betrayed our village and conspired with that demon? Ikagura turned to look at him with no expression on her face. The very same girl that works as a waitress in your mansion. I caught the two of them talking to each other. But this isn't my problem anymore. Ikagura replied as she walked away. The elder man was frozen in place. Sela, the orphan he hired to work for him, helped the demon. He would have never thought she would do such a terrible thing. But, what if she was actually under the demon, spell and now served under him? Speaking of which, seven years ago, Sela's parents were executed for wanting to help the demon. Could it be that Sela was actually not controlled and simply conspiring with the demon for revenge? All scenarios were possible at this point. Whether she was controlled or simply seeking revenge none of that mattered anymore. His decision was made. In the end, Sela only needed to be executed and nothing else. Ayur. Kotun. I have a favor to ask you, he called out his bodyguards. What is it boss? Two large built men dressed in ordinary clothes asked as they walked down the stairs. Ayur I need you to bring Sela here by any means, he ordered, and then turned to Kotun. You will gather all the villagers and tell them to come to Kanvu's hill right now. Sir, is that a public execution? Kotun asked in a curious tone. Yes, Sela had betrayed the village and helped the demon. She must be executed for interacting with that evil being. She is trying to do exactly what her parents tried to do back then. The old man replied. Death will be her punishment. As you wish. Now if you will excuse us. With that being said, both men took their leaves. Sela was cornered. There was no way she could get out of this situation. Again, she struggled to move and break free from the chains but it was useless. She then looked at the people beneath her. Most villagers were wishing for her death, while some were insulting her and the others remained silent but glared hatefully at her. Her eyes landed on her boss, at which point he quickly turned his back on her. She inhaled deeply as she shut her eyes and wait for her judgment. As I already told you since we got here, the head of the village spoke up then turned to face Sela, who remained silent. Sela interacted with the demon. Had she not done such action, the demon would have been long gone by now. He continued speaking. Just like her parents had done so years ago, she tried to help the demon. Whether she did it as a revenge for her parents' death or was manipulated, none of that matters at all. This is an act of treason. Such action is not tolerated and will be punished. Sela had been a good citizen over the years. This is why her death will be quick. The elder man shot a glance at his two bodyguards, to which they nodded and untied Sela from the pole. Sela tried to move away, only to receive a hard slap on her face causing her to fall down. Ayur grabbed her hairs and dragged her toward the guillotine. They got her on her knees and quickly placed her head in the hole and locked her hands so she wouldn't move. Her body hurt so much from the previous treatment she'd gotten. She had been whopped harshly for more than an hour already. Her mind couldn't help but wonder what was awaiting next, surely they weren't finished yet. A small groan escaped her lips when her former boss touched her bleeding wounds. It's unfortunate this is happening to you, but you are at least able to expect that much when betraying us. It's time to finish this. He crouched in front of her face and stroked the bangs covering her face, much to her disgust. Forgive me but this is for the good of everyone here. He stood up and turned at the crowd. This is here, at Canvu's Hill, that one of us will be executed. Sela, a worker of mine will meet her fate here and now. However before we start, I would like to hear your opinion on this. 
Sayla stared down in sadness at the people in front of her. She remembered when they used to respect her at least the day before. It was heartbreaking to see all of them turning their backs on her just because she interacted with Naruto. Oddly enough, she started thinking about the blonde. She wondered if Naruto was experiencing the same sadness she was feeling whenever they wished for his death. She always thought Naruto was the one creating conflicts which is why they wanted him dead so much. But looking closer at their hateful expression, she came to believe it could only be coming from malice. This village was the problem after all, not Naruto. She'd wished she could have realized it sooner. Had it been the case, she definitely would have sided with Naruto. This is nothing personal, Sayla. Any last words before we start? The head of the village asked. Sayla gathered all her remaining strength and spoke up. I do not regret my action because I know it saved someone's life. Should I die, I will never stop believing in what my parents believed. She paused before speaking again. Humans are demons, it doesn't matter to me, I want to believe in something much greater. This here is a proof of her betrayal. Anybody has something to say to this? The headman asked the villagers. Yeah. A voice was heard from the back of the crowd. At that, the atmosphere suddenly tensed up, bringing everyone on their knees except Sayla. It was at this moment that everyone knew, the demon was here. Not even a second later, Naruto Uzumaki appeared next to Sayla and looked down at her. Look at you, didn't I tell you that helping me was bringing more shit? I caused your parents' death and almost yours as well. It doesn't matter, I chose this path myself. Sayla basically implied she was ready to die anytime, causing him to release a small chuckle. Alright, then should I let it continue? Do you want to die? Naruto asked, to which she repeated herself. Okay then, I'll let it continue, he said nonchalantly as he got up to leave. Sayla raised her head and looked at him with fearful eyes, at which point Naruto's chuckles only increased. The blonde then kneeled in front of her face and repeated himself in a serious tone as he stared deeply into her eyes. Do you want to die or not? Be honest with yourself. It was then that Sayla fully broke down in tears. She didn't want to die. Not like this, anyway. She wanted to live. There was still so much for her to experience than dying here. She still needed to experience love, having kids, moreover, traveling. I I don't want to die yet. I want to live. Please, save me. As soon as the words left her mouth, Naruto broke her bindings in a single blow. He quickly picked her up bridal style and ran through the crowd toward the exit. Sayla tightly wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck and snuggled into his chest as she sobbed. Don't, let them escape. The headman yelled aloud as soon as Naruto's pressuring aura wore off. At that, most men guarding the place pulled out their bows and shot multiples arrows at Naruto and Sayla. Naruto summoned a chakra blade through thin air and easily deflected them. Unfortunately by the time he was done, he and Sayla were already surrounded by the whole village. Naruto stood frozen in the middle of the crowd as he observed his surroundings. He sighed boringly, and leaned his head toward Sayla's ear. Hold on tighter to me. She complied and held him as hard as she possibly could. So hard, that she couldn't help but wonder if she was actually hurting him a bit. You're not getting away. One of them yelled aloud. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle at that. He was forced to stop chuckling as soon as another opened his mouth and blurted out something interesting. Why are you taking Sayla with you? What use do you have of her? Naruto raised an eyebrow and then looked down at the young woman in his arms. Good question. Now that he thought about it, why was he saving her? Up until now he'd never cared about anyone but himself, and here he was, risking his ass to save another. Moreover, the person he was holding was a human being. She was part of the people he hated the most on earth. We will leave you alone, but you're gonna have to hand the girl over. Ayur, the headman's bodyguard stepped in front of the crowd. He was shortly followed by his fellow comrades, Kotun, who now stood beside him. Naruto shot them a brief glance, before glancing back at Sayla. The expression on Sayla's face was bothering him a lot. It was a mixture of fear and hope. Obviously she was afraid he would ditch her but at the same time he could tell just from looking into her eyes that she trusted him with her life. He couldn't understand the reason why she was placing her hope on someone as himself. He was bad, he'd never shown a good side of him to anyone, and despite all that, she trusted him. Either she was blind, or simply desperate to be saved. Why do you trust me? He asked her, ignoring the people all around. Because I know you're a good person inside, Sayla admitted, confusing him. 
Nonsense. Naruto denied back. Kill them. Kotun dashed forward with a large knife. Naruto stepped aside, avoiding the offender's attack with ease and stabbed his leg. The large man quickly fell down and cried in pain while holding his injury. Naruto quickly rose up his leg and knocked the man unconscious with a powerful kick. Not even a second later, everyone around threw themselves forward to attack the blonde and Sela. Naruto dodged every single attack coming from them one by one, keeping Sela safe all the while. Naruto couldn't fight back, not with Sela on him at least. There was only one way to get rid of them. I will finish all of them. Naruto jumped in the air and chanted a spell. Paint the sky black, and cover the world in a heap of darkness, black art. Sela's eyes widened in shock when Naruto's killing intent spiked up. He was aiming to kill everyone below them with his upcoming attack. She didn't want him to kill anyone, even if it was the ones who almost caused her death. Naruto was better than them and she knew it. She needed to stop him now before it was too late. Don't kill them Naruto, it won't make you any better than them. Caught off guard by her sudden burst, Naruto stopped his spell on time, censored, hold on tight. Naruto raised one of his arm in the air and created a large Rasengan. He then let his body fall down and slammed his Rasengan on the ground, creating a large crater and pushing back the villagers violently. You good? He looked down at Sela, who was still on him. His question was shortly answered when she winced in pain at her bleeding injuries, causing the blonde to hurriedly get out of the village. Shoot. Naruto recognized the headman's voice shouting, and glanced back. A large torrent of fire arrows were shot at them in a scattered formation. This was going to be a real pain in the ass. Naruto turned back and caught a one of the arrow barehanded and threw it back at its owner's head. Still sitting in his arms, Sela watched in horror at the scenery of the man dying from above Naruto, shoulder. She then stared up at Naruto, who seemed not to care one bit about the man he just killed. Sela couldn't believe what Naruto had done. He killed someone cold-blooded right in her sight. She snuggled into his arms, silently, as they finally escaped the village. She shut her eyes tightly, wanting to forget what she just witnessed. Once they cut chase with the villagers, Naruto brought her to his home and set her down gently on his bed. He quickly took out a white towel and dipped it in water before applying it on her wounds. Sela winced in pain at that. It stings. Duh. It's water mixed with medicinal plants. Naruto replied without even looking at her as he treated her legs. Don't move. His hands moved from her injured legs toward her chest. Naruto paused for a second before considering something. The next thing immediately caught Sela off guard to the point she was rendered speechless. Nonchalantly, Naruto ripped her shirt open, revealing a black lacy bra and placed the towel on her left censored as he groped her directly. Unwillingly, Sela let out a soft moan before slapping his hands away. What are you doing? Isn't it obvious? I'm healing you. Naruto said as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. Why you see can't do that. Sela blushed heavily and covered herself. I don't have all night. Either you let me heal you or just get lost already. Naruto said in a serious tone. I think I can manage this part myself. Sela replied and grabbed the towel from Naruto's hand. Naruto didn't object since it would save him from the trouble of nursing her. He censored his head aside in confusion when she turned around and took off her top. She was apparently trying to hide something from him. How suspicious, he thought. As soon as he moved to look at her from another angle, Sela had moved along. He tried again multiple times but still couldn't see a thing. Unable to take this any longer, he asked. What are you trying to hide? Better not be some weapon. A. Eh? A confused expression could be read all over her face as she turned around blushing. I it's nothing like that. Once again, she turned back and continued what she was doing, much to Naruto's annoyance. What is it then? I don't want you to see my bare chest, she replied timidly, as she finished healing herself and grabbed her piece of underwear. Are you ashamed to be seen naked? Naruto's question caused Sela's blush to increase. Of course. Who wouldn't? She blurted out. I'm not you see. Naruto spoke in an unconcerned tone as he looked away. Anyways. Sela regained her calm when he spoke in a dead serious tone. It was finally time to discuss about real matters. Naruto grabbed a chair, and sat in front of her. Sela felt uncomfortable, as his eyes wouldn't leave hers. After a full minute of staring at her, Naruto finally broke the silence. What happened to you after you went home? 
Sela was hesitant at first, but then eventually confessed everything. After a long walking time, she finally arrived to her house. She entered her place and quickly went for her bed. She lied on it silently, thinking about her day. Her unexpected confrontation with Naruto went pretty well for the most part. Well, except for the part where she was caught naked and saw his well-endowed body. She couldn't help it but feel embarrassed each time she thought about it. Feeling her stomach growling, she decided to get up and cooked a meal to eat. She stopped halfway to the kitchen when she heard a few knocks on her door. She approached the entrance door and looked outside the window. She recognized the newcomer as Ayur, the headman's bodyguard. He didn't seem to have noticed her as he tapped the door even harder. Sir, she isn't there. He spoke into a small device attached to his ear. Sela took several steps back. What was going on for him to be there? Did something significant happen for Ayur to be at her door? Surely sir. Ayur nodded and then kicked the door's handle. Wow. Something was definitely not right now. First of all, she'd never seen Ayur sent out personally by her boss. And now he was trying to break into her house. Whatever it was, she could tell it wasn't something good at all. Unfortunately for her, by the time she'd finally decided to move, Ayur was already inside. Sela, sir. Walzo wants you to see him immediately. He turned to face her. Afraid, Sela fell down on her rear. What's happening? Don't question me and just come. Ayur replied as he waited at the entrance. She shook her head. I'm not going anywhere until you tell me what's happening. Ayur lost patience. He approached her as he recalled the words of his boss, to bring her by any means. Come. He harshly pulled her by the arm and dragged her toward the exit. Let go of me. Sela shot back at him, only to receive a hard punch on her jaw. She yelled out in pain as she fell down and held the area where she was just hit. The guy wasn't done yet and kicked her in the stomach, causing further pain. She coughed out blood before being pulled by the hairs. Now come quietly will you? Let go, of me, she repeated, panting heavily. The man scoffed and raised her in the air. And it was the last thing she remembered before she fell unconscious. She finally was able to regain consciousness, but by the time she did, she was already attached against a metal pole. She threw few glances around and eventually came to recognize the place. A place she was very familiar with, Canvu's Hill, where her parents were murdered. She knew at that moment, that she was going to die. This is your punishment for helping out a demon. She heard a voice behind her. It was undoubtedly her boss's voice. I know everything from Ikagura, Sela. Turn on the lights, he ordered, at which point many powerful rays of light were shot at her. Sela closed her eyes slightly, unable to take it. She quickly got used to the lights and found herself in shock when she saw all the villagers gathered around her. Her boss approached her with a whip in his hands and spoke up. I want to thank all of you for coming here without your children present. What is going here? One of them asked. Is that Sela San? Why is she there? A woman in the crowd asked worriedly. Yo. Come on. Why the censored we got to come here? It's midnight already. Multiple complaints could be heard from the crowd. Everybody calm down. There is a reason as to why I've brought all of you here. The head of the village then pointed his whip at Sela. Sela, a worker of mine had betrayed us today. She went outside the village without permission and interacted with the demon we hate so much. She even helped him at some point. At that, most the villagers glared hatefully at Sela. A satisfaction smile could be seen on the headman's face. Sela San will never do such thing. I've known her for a long time. She's really pure hearted. A man stood up in front of the crowd. Oh yeah? Then tell them about it Sela, he stated as he pointed his finger at her. When Sela didn't respond, he raised his whip and slammed it on her. He repeated this action several times, gaining scream of pain coming from her. Answer him already you piece of shit. I did. Sela shouted back, causing the headman to stop. It's the truth, I helped Naruto. Sela. All these years you've been deceiving us, the man mumbled in disbelief. Sela raised her head weakly at him and spoke. No I didn't. She was unable to finish as the man unleashed his fury at her. You're no better than your parents after all. You damn bitch. You deceived all of us. You deserve to die just like your parents. It hurt her feelings to hear that. She felt her heart breaks into tiny pieces. One moment before that he was against her death and the next, no, please hear me out. The people have spoken. There's no need for words anymore. He swung his whip around and hit her hard with it. 
That's all that happened before you rescued me, she finished. Naruto nodded couple times at her story. I see, thank you, Sailo whispered in a low voice, much to Naruto's surprise. What? Thank you for what? Naruto was confused at her words. A human was grateful to him. This was new. For saving me, Sela trailed off. Naruto grabbed her by the arm, and pulled her face to face. Don't ever be grateful to me. I'm not some human you can. I don't care about all that. Her voice was fragile, but the look in her eyes was strong nevertheless. What? Naruto's blue eyes turned crimson as he stared intensively at her. Finally, he sighed in defeat as he pulled his head away and lied next to her. Honestly, I don't get you at all human. No matter what I say to you, you'll always deny me. Uzumaki-san, I've meant to ask Naruto sat up and covered her mouth. Do not ever call my name again. She gave him a grief submissive look, to which he pulled back and allowed her to continue. As I was saying Uzumaki-san. TSKK. Anything I say will never get through with you, I'm so done. Naruto summoned a dagger and held it at her throat. He sighed loudly once again. Meh. Killing you after all my efforts to save your ass would be a waste. He thought aloud and threw the weapon somewhere randomly in the room as he lied back down. What is it? Naruto titled his head at Sela. He could tell that she was getting a little bashful about asking him something by the uncomfortable way she glanced at him, and finally she worked up the balls to open her mouth. Why did you save me? I thought you didn't want to have anything to do with humans. That was true. He didn't want to have anything to do with them. However, he still owed a debt to her parents for taking good care of him, which probably why he saved her. It was the least he could do. Naruto didn't even bother to reply and turned off the lantern sitting on top of the table. Get some sleep, you're gonna need it. Yes, she replied in disappointment as she lied down next to him. The bed was rather small for two people to fit in. Sela couldn't help but move and try out every possible position. Not to mention that the room was also as cold as ice. This had been going on for the past 10 minutes already, and Naruto grunted in annoyance each time she was doing it. Stop moving or you're gonna end up sleeping on the floor. But Sela wasn't having any of it as she continued to move in order to find a comfortable position. She immediately stopped when she felt an arm slid around her waist. Not even a second later, Naruto pulled her into a hug. She blushed madly as she could feel her censors pressed against his chest. W what are you doing? Solving the problem. I'm squishing us together so we can fit on the bed and you're also cold so I'm warming you up. He titled his head back to look at her, eyes bright even in the darkness. Sela was still blushing slightly from earlier. It felt really awkward to be this close to someone. She to admit it. It felt a hell lot more comfortable to be in his embrace than when she wasn't earlier. Being held by him felt warm, and also, secure. I will tolerate you tonight, but when the day comes tomorrow, I will treat you the same as any other humans, he mumbled out before falling fast asleep. Hum. Was all that came out from her as a response. Sunlight streamed through the window, signaling the start of another beautiful day. Or it would have been had the sun decided not to be an asshole and hit Naruto square on the face with a beam of light. Groaning slightly, Naruto tried to duck his head under his arm to hide from the sun, only to get a face full of something soft and sweet smelling. He sputtered noisily and opened his eyes to see what the hell the stringy stuff in his mouth was. His eyes landed on Sela, who was curled up against him. Her left arm was wrapped firmly around his right, and her cheek rested gently against his forearm. He also noticed that her mouth was hanging wide open. Well, it clarified what the liquid making a puddle on his arm was. She was a drooler. Even if he felt grossed out by the growing river of drool, he decided not to wake her up. He quietly got off bed, making sure not to wake her and head straight outside the back of his house. There, he picked up a container, filled it with water and set it on a small fire camp to boil it. Right after, Naruto went back inside with the water ready and took out a pack of ramen out of the box. He poured the liquid inside the bowl and waited. With nothing left to do, he focused his attention back on Sela. He hadn't really looked at the girl since they'd met. In fact, the only thing he knew about her was that she was the daughter of the orphanage's owners, had long black hair, and was rather kind. He marched up to her and touched her wounds. She was fully healed already. Sela stirred up slightly at his touch, before completely waking up. She sat up and stared on at the floor for no particular reason at all. Just an old habit of hers. Her eyes then landed on Naruto, who was in a crouch position, and glancing at her body. 
Sayla frowned and looked down at the garment, looking for anything out of the ordinary. She was astonished when she finally realized all of her wounds from yesterday had vanished. She smiled gratefully at him, to which he quickly rejected as he was just about to kick her out. Well, it didn't matter to her as long as he knew how she felt. That's the ramen box you stole from the village yesterday huh? She walked up at the corner and bent down to see the box. Upon hearing that, Naruto turned around and gave Sayla a suspicious look. He didn't remember seeing her yesterday in that crowd, so how did she know he'd stolen it? Naruto kept looking at her for a few more seconds before letting it go. Getting suspicious of her at this point was getting him nowhere, at least for now. Naruto-san, she called out to him, causing him to groan because he was interrupted while eating his favorite food. Naruto paused and allowed her to speak. He could also tell whatever she was about to say was definitely not something good, judging at how serious she just sounded. What do you want? Naruto asked, sounding more annoyed than he intended to. It's about yesterday, she was hesitant as she spoke. Why? Why did you kill that man? The one I threw the arrow back right? She nodded. Why? He tried to kill us, he deserved it, he replied. This is wrong. You shouldn't take anyone's life even if, even if they'd tried to kill you, her voice fell down as she uttered the last words. Not like I care, people die every day. Naruto told her, his tone was plain and uncaring. Sayla bit her inner lip gently. She was having a hard time absorbing what he just said. In a way, it wasn't really surprising to her that Naruto had changed so much. He was put through a lot of sufferings nearly every day for the past seven years. Yet, she couldn't help but feel depressed at how much he'd changed over the years. Back then, he used to be so funny, cheerful and would always have that smile on his face. You've changed, she mumbled in a low voice, causing Naruto to scoff at how naive she was. Time changes people. His reply was short but so meaningful at once. She knew that for sure. There was no denying that over time, people would derive from who they originally were. But even if it was the case for Naruto, she wanted to believe that the him from before was still present deep inside him. Well, actually, she was sure of it. I'm done eating. Naruto gulped down the soup, walked over the exit door and opened it. I'll escort you down since you're so helpless. Sayla turned her face away in embarrassment, and then nodded. When outside, Naruto lifted her off, placed her on his shoulder and jumped down, causing Sayla to get slightly angry at how he was treating her. Once they landed, Naruto bent down and allowed her to get off him. An awkward silence was now present as the two stared at each other, not knowing what to say. They stayed like that for no more than 30 seconds before Naruto spoke. Well, now you're gonna have to be on your own. Hum. She muffled in response before turning and walking away. Sayla. Naruto called her out for the first time by her name. Try not to get killed. His voice sounded bossy but caring at the same time. Sayla blushed at the carrying tone he implied when he said those words. It seemed that Naruto still had a caring side and was still not too far gone. Thank you for everything Naruto-san. Take care. Idiot dumbass. Naruto smirked at her. Man, she never listened to him in the end. Always referring him by his name and showing gratitude as well. Oh well, not like it bothered him anymore. Naruto was walking in opposite direction from Sayla and was about to go back home when he suddenly felt a source of magic coming from behind. He turned back, and saw a large torrent of black fire coming straight at him and Sayla. Sayla threw her arms in front of her in a defensive manner as the fire kept getting closer with each second. Naruto dashed at an extreme speed, and pushed Sayla out of the way before avoiding the fire too. The black flames ended up hitting a random tree, causing it to catch on fire for a few seconds before vanishing without any traces left. I missed so badly. Ha ha ha. A loud laughter was heard from afar as Naruto helped Sayla to stand up. Who the censored are you? Naruto asked, not hiding one bit the anger behind his voice. The laugh suddenly stopped. I'm from the Balam Alliance, the strongest dark guild named Grimoire Heart, God Slayer Zancro. The newcomer jumped down from a tree and landed several feet from Naruto and Sayla. He had long and spiky blonde hair that reached down to his lower back. His eyes were red in color with multiple circular patterns. He wore a yellow and dark blue skirt-like armor with a red waist ribbon that exposes the right side of his chest as well as his right shoulder. He gave them a psychotic grin as he made his way toward them, only to be hit in the head by another man. Unlike the previous guy, this one was a huge, overweight, 
yet muscular man wearing a large dark robe-like garment with a lighter colored spotted design near the top. Underneath this, he was bare-chested, two belt-like collars wrapped around him in a cross fashion and wore superhero-looking tights. His skin was very pale. His hairs were black and shaggy with slight sideburns. He also had a huge head, yet small face, and a very thick neck. Among the most noticeable of his facial features were his large eyebrows, his bulging chin, and his thick lips. Master Hades told us to negotiate, not start a fight. You're always so serious, Cain. I hate your guts for real you damn fatso. Zancro said as he crossed his arm and turned his face away from his partner. What the hell do you want from me? Naruto asked as he overheard their short discussion. Kane stepped forward and kneeled down in front of Naruto, as if he was his superior or something. My master wishes to see you. I don't care who you guys are, just leave me alone and get the hell out of my property while you still can. Naruto thought aloud, much to Zankro's amusement. So you think you're some tough shit huh? Zankro laughed at Naruto in a crazy manner. Sela watched quietly behind Naruto as the atmosphere tensed up. She could tell that a fight was about to break out in any seconds. Shut the hell up. Naruto raised his fist and crashed it right at Zankro's face, sending this one crash few meters back. You've done it now dipshit. Zankro stood up, and gathered fire in his hands. Move Kane, I'll turn this guy into ashes. Naru Sela opened her mouth to say something but was silent right away by Naruto who held his arm in front of her in a defensive manner. Stay back now. Wait Zankro. Master Hades didn't ask us to kill him. Kane held out his hand to Zankro to make him stop. Flame gods. Zankro mumbled as the fire in his hands grew stronger with each second passing. Kagutsu. However, before Zankro could even finish his spell, Naruto appeared in front of him in a blink of an eye and slammed a powerful sidekick to his ribcage. Zankro flew back in midair for a brief moment before finally catching his footing on the ground. Not bad. Rasengan. Naruto brought his hand forward and aimed it straight at Zankro's chest. However, before Naruto could even reach Zankro, his arm was caught by Kane's large hand, who then pulled him and slammed his palm on his chest. Naruto was sent crashing loudly against a giant boulder before falling down on the grass. Naruto. Sela ran to Naruto worriedly. Are you okay Naruto? Damn it. This fat ass is pretty strong. Naruto get up as he wiped the blood dripping from his mouth. I guess I'm gonna have to take them seriously. Not even a second later, Naruto's body was now wrapped in a red aura, his eyes pure red as he stared at both of his opponents, a very twisted grin graced his bleeding mouth. Sela's eyes widened in fear as she felt the evil aura Naruto was giving off. This feeling. Zankro and Kane watched in interest at Naruto's sudden burst in power. This power of his was exactly the reason why their master had sent them. The power of a demon. Shall we begin? Naruto's voice was different, almost animalistic in tone. Naruto. Sela uttered in disbelief as she observed Naruto from the back. A gasp escaped her mouth when he turned his bloody eyes upon her trembling form. The thin whisker on his cheeks now looks like abysmal scars, and his sharp teeth were bare in her direction. If he didn't look abominably scary at the moment, she might even say that he looked hot. God, she had some weird fetishes. Where are you looking at? I'm here. Zankro dashed at Naruto, with his fists coated in black flames. Zankro censored his right hand back and sent it forward to hit Naruto which failed terribly as this one just shoved his head aside. A groan escaped the dark wizard as he continued with a series of punches. Damn it. I can't hit this trash. Zankro growled out as Naruto blocked and dodged all his punches. The two were moving quite fast for Sela to follow with her own eyes. One second they appeared before her and the next they were already meters away. Sela couldn't help but be worried about Naruto's current form. This power he had, this aura he was giving off the twisted smile on his face, everything about him right now reeked of pure evil. Naruto side stepped to one side and changed directions while backing away from Zankro, and the latter continued his assault of heavy punches. Turn to ashes, exclaimed the god slayer as he brought his palm up. A dark purple magic circle appeared in Zankro's palm, and shot out multiple fireballs at Naruto. Naruto took a few steps back, predicting the movement of his opponent attack, and narrowly dodged them by twisting his body in midair. As soon as he landed on his feet, 
Naruto burst forward at binding speed and planted a powerful punch on Zankro's face, sending him backward to the grass. Naruto's eyes widened when he felt Zankro's attack coming back him. Cheap. Naruto said as he evaded all of them. Zankro took the opportunity of Naruto's distracted state to jump and plant a knee on his stomach. Small fry. Naruto glared at him. Shut the hell up. The blonde landed another punch at his enemy, but this time he wasn't done. Naruto sped forward, and then jumped above Zankro's falling body before stomping on him. Naruto crossed his arms in a defensive manner and was sent backward as a large black fire coming out from Zankro's body came at him. The blonde regained his control over his momentum in midair as he caught footing on a tree, using it and sent himself back at his opponent. Once again, the two engaged in a session of close-ranged combat. From the sidelines, Sela watched in amazement as Naruto overwhelmed his foe with ease. She then glanced over at the other guy's companion, Kane. That one didn't seem to be interested one bit in taking part of the battle. It was a relief to Sela. The last thing she wanted was to see the two of them ganging up on Naruto. This dipshit, Zankro muttered as he picked himself off the ground. No matter how I burn him, his body keeps regenerate. Naruto kicked Zankro in the jaw, reached down for his throat with right hand and lifted him up in the air. Zankro inhaled as much air as possible despite being strangled. Feeling a sudden increase in Zankro's magic power, Naruto twisted around and slammed his head first on the ground. He then let go of him and charged up a Rasengan into his palm. Like you won already. Zankro flipped himself while on the ground and sent a blazing kick on Naruto's face. Before Naruto could even regain his stance, Zankro wasted no time and exhaled fire from his mouth. Flame God's bellow. The dark wizard's eyes widened in shock as Naruto stood in perfect condition even after receiving his spell. Well, almost in perfect condition if it wasn't for his top that burnt away, leaving his only torso naked. How the censored are you still standing after that? You're supposed to be in ashes already, Zankro's voice trembled in slight fear. Sela watched in amazement at Naruto. She definitely knew he was strong, but she didn't expect him to be that strong. This fight was a one-sided battle. His opponent had no chance of winning at all. However, what impressed her most was Naruto's ability to heal at a fast pace. No matter what kind of wounds he suffered, his body would automatically repair itself, even if it required time. Naruto spun on himself and placed a round kick on Zankro's stomach, causing him to roll on the ground backward. Once the dark mage stood up again, Naruto took hold of his head and slammed it against a tree in a large thudding sound. Blood dripped down Zankro's forehead as this one fell unconscious from the impact. Naruto summoned a small dagger, held it in the air high, ready to slam it down on his foe. But before he could even attempt anything, he felt himself surrounded by black flames. Naruto let go of Zankro and retreated backward before the fire could even get to him. Zankro rapidly regained consciousness, stared at Naruto with nothing else but pure anger. The God Slayer joined his hands together and created what looked like lobster's claws before spreading them apart. Flame God's Supper. Naruto readied himself for the upcoming attack as he raised his own power level. In a fast movement, Zankro closed his hands together as his spell reached Naruto and trapped him inside it. Naruto groaned in slight pain as his body started burning from being inside his opponent's magic. Naruto. Sela shouted worriedly as she made her way toward the fire prison. But before she could reach Naruto, Kane had appeared before her and knocked her away on the grass in a single movement. Sela struggled to get up as she kept her eyes focused on Naruto only. She had to do something to help Naruto, even if it meant throwing her life away. Once again, she tried to reach Naruto only to be stopped by no one else but her own body. Am my body, she thought aloud as she desperately tried to move. She couldn't believe it. Her body was not responding to her at all. She quickly found the answers to all her question when she noticed Kane holding a tiny puppet into his large hands. A strand of hair was also attached at the top of the puppet's head. Kane faced her, chuckling to himself as he spoke. This is my magic, it called Ushi no Kokumairi. He continued speaking afterward, giving a simple and quick explanation about his lost magic being able to manipulate any individuals whose hairs had been stuck to his puppet. He gently let set down the puppet into a sitting position making Sela mimic the same movement. Sit quietly here as I finish your life, he stated as he walked up to her. Sela stared at her attacker, helpless from defending herself and moving at all. 
she could feel herself getting more and more frightened with each steps Kane took. Is this how I'm going to die? She asked mentally to herself. God damn it. Kane watch out. Zancro shouted at his partner in fear as his spell had vanished. Wa Kane turned his face at Zancro. As soon as he did, a hard fist was planted on his face. Kane cried out in pain and fell to his knees as he held his face. Sayla was surprised to see Naruto standing before her, slightly injured and holding Kane's puppet. Once again, he'd managed to save her before the worst could occur. Looking at her saver's back, she really could not help but feel like a burden slowing Naruto down. He'd already done a lot for her and she could not even return it back to him. Don't you dare even lay your filthy hands on her. Naruto sent his leg crashing into Kane's face in a powerful kick. This guy is much stronger than Master Hades anticipated, Zancro, Kane blurted aloud as he picked himself up and looked at his comrade. No choice Zancro, we're gonna have to bring him by force. Tskkk. About time your brain start working, you chunk of meat. Zancro grinned evilly as he raised his magic power to his greatest. Naruto's eyebrows twitched at his magic power's boost. A smirk made its way onto Naruto's face, as he positioned himself to fight. Looks like you were still hiding your true power. Zancro's grin dropped as his face turned into a serious one. It pains me to even go that far. Naruto turned his attention back to Sayla and threw her the puppet. Don't interfere at all. Sayla nodded back in response as she caught the puppet into her hands. A small sweat drop on the side of her head as Kane started crying comically for his belonging. She wasted no time and detached her strand of hair present on the doll. As a result of that, a huge weight was lifted off her shoulders the very second she dispelled the doll's magic on her. Her attention was drawn back to Naruto, who was now confronting the two dark mages. He is really powerful, Kane uttered as he wiped the blood off his mouth and looked over to Sayla. If I could get my doll back then we will win. Flame God's bellow. Zancro exhaled fire from his mouth, heading right to Naruto's current location. Erg, Naruto ran through the flames as it burned him, and punched Zancro's mouth. He wasn't done yet as he grabbed his leg and spun on along Zancro before sending him crashing loudly against his partner. As the two got up, he dashed forward and slammed a Rasengan on Kane's chest, engulfing him and Zancro into a large dark ball. Rasengan. I have to finish them fast, Naruto thought to himself as his body slowly decreased in power, thus making his healing ability even slower. We are no match for him, Kane admitted shamefully, wincing every now and then at his injuries. Shut the censored up. I ain't done with him yet. Zancro hurled aloud as he removed the dirt of his clothes. Kane, Zancro's eyes landed on Sayla, at which point he nodded in return. Flame God's scythe. Zancro gathered his hands together, creating a large scythe and began to swung it around. Take that! He yelled out as he repeated the same movement, trying his best to aim Sayla. Sayla rolled back as the scythe just passed by her head, evading death by an inch. She observed thoughtfully Zancro's movement as he continued swinging around. The God Slayer was no longer aiming at Naruto but rather at her. Sayla get away! Naruto ordered as he turned back to look at her. Seeing Naruto open, Kane wasted no time and attacked him. The Dark Mage launched his body forward and headbutted Naruto right in the face meanwhile Zancro restlessly continued to attack Sayla. Naruto spitted out the blood from his mouth and then ran over to Sayla's direction. Kane jumped in the air in attempt to fully stomp on Naruto, which failed miserably as this one moved away and kicked him at the same time. Get out of way. I'm cornered. Sayla mentally shouted as her back landed on a tree. Know where to run now. Zancro pulled the scythe back and then threw it at her. Die. However, before it could even reach her, Naruto appeared in a second and took in Zancro's spell. Blood spurted from Naruto's stomach as the scythe managed to pierce him deep before he discarded it. Naruto fell to his knee, panting heavily as he felt his own power decreasing furthermore. This is going to take a while to heal up, I have to hurry. Kane. Here's your shitty doll. Zancro threw the item to partner as his usual sickening grin appeared on his face. Don't worry we ain't going to kill ya. Seems you can't go on anymore, how about we stop here and you come with us? Kane questioned. Did you not hear me fat ass? I have no intention to go anywhere. Naruto shouted in response. So be it. Kane's body turned into steel, due to his doll's magic and ran to Naruto at a greater speed than before. 
Too bad our master wants him alive or else he'd be dead already. Zancro shouted and followed behind Kane. I guess I'll settle with the girl instead. Sayla. Stand by me or you'll be caught up into it. Naruto held out his hand at her. Sayla gladly accepted and hugged his back. With that, Naruto started chanting a spell, the very same one as the day before. Paint the sky black, and cover the world in a heap of darkness. He's going to kill again, she thought bitterly as she could not stop him from that. Black art. Extinction. Abruptly, a colossal torrent of raw power erupted from Naruto's body, being so large in intensity that it forced any who saw it to widen their eyes out of shock. What the censored? Zankro exclaimed. What is this? Kane exclaimed fearfully. Within a second, the area around them was engulfed by a wave of darkness including the two members of Grimoire Heart. Naruto's attack was so strong that it devastated a large part of the forest. Sayla shut her eyes tightly, barely able to withstand such brute force and gripped Naruto harder as she witnessed the destructive power coming from him. The process lasted a full minute before eventually stopping. When Sayla reopened her eyes, she was met with the sight of destruction. Both she and Naruto were now standing inside a large crater extending more than a hundred meters. She poked her head over Naruto's shoulders, and saw the two dark mages lying lifelessly on the demolished ground. Naruto-san. Sayla. I before he could even finish his sentence, his legs suddenly gave out on him, causing him to crumble into a heap on the ground. Naruto-san. Sayla screamed, immediately concerned about the blonde despite her fear. It took her a few minutes before stopping her boy from trembling. She gently set him on his back and placed his head onto her lap. With a shaky hand, she reached up to his neck and checked for his pulse and let loose a small sigh of relief when it throbbed powerfully against her fingertips. At least he was alive. Her body quivered a bit with fear, but she ignored her anxiety in favor of the boy sleeping between her legs. She pushed a few loose strands away from his eyes, and then smiled at him. Thank you, Naruto. Splendid. He's even more impressive than we expected. A tall, muscular and imposing individual spoke aloud as observed the sight of destruction while he stood above a one-eyed strange creature. He was currently communicating with someone through telepathy. He's unconscious right now, should we bring him in? He asked and waited for a response. As you please, I, Dory 8 will continue watching him for another month, Kyoka-sama. The individual replied as he took his leave. The first thing Naruto noticed was that it was dark. He briefly wondered if he was in the sewers of his mind again, but quickly wrote that thought off when he didn't hear the constant dripping of the eternally broken drainage pipe. Unfortunately, that did little to calm his nerves. Thinking that something might have been covering his eyes, he tried to lift his right hand to push it out of the way. When it didn't budge, he began to panic. Suddenly, something cool and wet dripped onto his dead arm. What the hell? He wondered, staring in the direction where he believed his arm was resting. Naruto-san. He heard and looked at whoever mumbled his name. Sayla was currently sitting beside him, holding a wet towel in her hands. He looked closely at her and noticed Miner's injuries on her body. All of a sudden, everything that had happened before he passed out came flooding back to him in one fell swoop. He remembered it all. Fighting with the dark mages, impaling the enemy in the look of pure shock and fear on Sayla's face after the fight. Wincing slightly, he squashed that memory for the time being to focus on his current dilemma of where the hell he was. Your body still haven't recovered, please try not to move. Sayla implied as she applied the towel over his bare chest. If Naruto wasn't feeling weak at the moment, he definitely would have protested. Unfortunately, she was right. No matter how hard he tried to move, his body wouldn't react the way he wanted to. He closed his eyes, relaxing for a full minute before speaking. Where are we? His voice sounding much weaker than he'd liked. We are in a cave right now. Sayla replied and continued nursing him. What are those injuries on you? I don't remember you getting hurt during my fight. These are the injuries I got from trying to get back to my home after multiples failures, but I eventually was able to make it without anyone noticing me. She recalled as she glanced over her wounds, it's nothing to worry about compared to yours. You shouldn't worry about my wounds, my body can heal itself without any problems, he said. Sayla shook her head in disapproval. If it was the case then you would have been completely healed by now. Naruto fell silent at her answer. She was definitely right. It was impossible for him to recover with the way he was right now. The power he'd used for his fight totally drained him dry. Goddamn side effect. 
It looked like he still had a long way to go before even trying to use that power again. What happened to the two of them? He asked abruptly. Sayla paused what she was doing and focused her attention back to him. They're gone. After I came back from my house, I went back to the scene where you previously battled. A woman came and took them before vanishing completely. She was most likely affiliated with them because of their guild mark. I tried to look for a better place for us to stay but the villagers were on a scout. They were apparently looking for you especially so I had no choice but to settle in this cave here with you. I'll kill them all the next time they even try something against me, he thought aloud, feeling his hatred for humans growing slightly. You mustn't, you'll never gain anything from it, she trailed off and moved her hand from his chest toward his stomach. Naruto groaned out painfully. Shit this hurts. Please bear with it a little longer. This area is more damaged than the rest of your body. Sayla said, as she recalled the moment when he was pierced by the dark mage's attack. You lost a lot of blood. Naruto didn't say anything to that but instead glanced at her. Why are you still trying to help me? She grasped his right hand into her smaller ones and smiled down at him. His first impulse was to shove her away but seeing her smiling genuinely at him made unable to do so. Never in his life, would he think seeing someone showing him such a lovely expression. You've saved my life many times, this is the least I can do to show you my gratitude. She spoke those words, the smile never leaving her face. I don't need you to be here. I can take care of myself. Your opinion doesn't matter to me. I've decided to stay here and take care of you until you recover. Sayla declared. TSKK. Nothing gets through that damn thick skull of yours. Do whatever you want I don't give a shit anymore. Just remember that if you try anything suspicious I'll kill ya. Surely. She couldn't help but giggle at his way of acting tough. Don't make fun of me or I'll kill you. He turned his face in both annoyance and embarrassment as the pain from his stomach faded away. I'm done. Sayla said as she placed the towel back in the bowl of water nearby. Let me rest now, he turned his face away from her and closed his eyes in attempt to sleep. Yes, she stared at his face for a couple of minutes, smiling at how different he looked when he was asleep. Out of boredom, she ran her fingers through the thick mass of blonde. It felt like a strange mix of between hair and fur something which greatly puzzled and pleased her at the same time. Realizing exactly what she was doing, she quickly dropped her smile and stood up, more than a little embarrassed by her actions. On the bright side, no one had been around to see it. For a few seconds she wondered what she should do, but after sniffing herself, she decided that she needed to bathe. Badly. With that thought in mind, she found her pack and some fresh clothing and slipped out to the river. She made sure to check every single bush and trees before stripping. The last thing she wanted was for someone to run into her while bathing. Confident that she wouldn't be peeped on, she quickly stripped and plunged herself into the river. The water was cool, but since it was pretty hot outside, she didn't mind much. Lathering up with the sweet-smelling soap that she'd brought from her house, Sayla washed her body as quickly as possible. Even if there was no one in the area, she still didn't want to risk it. As she bathed, she felt her eyes constantly shift to the cave's direction. For the millionth times of the day, she found herself worried about Naruto's condition even if she didn't necessarily needed to. I really need to stop worrying about him so much, with that thought in mind, she stepped out of the water and awkwardly entered the cave with nothing more than a bath towel. She sat down next to the sleeping form of Naruto and gently placed a wet towel over his forehead. At that, a small content smile made its way onto his face as he kept sleeping peacefully. She kept staring at him for a while before reaching her packs to take out some of her underwear. Now partially dressed, she lied down next to him and leaned forward onto his forearm, using it as a makeshift pillow. It wasn't the most comfortable position to sleep in, but it was a thousand times better than sleeping on a hard ground. She reached for her blanket, and covered herself along with Naruto. She yawned widely before setting herself into a better comfortable position. She blushed at herself upon noticing how close her body was against his, but decided to not fuss about it. She then looked up at the blonde one last time, and smiled. Good night, Naruto. Fatigue overcame her, and in less than a minute, she was already fast asleep. Naruto sat up and groggily opened his eyes. It took a few seconds for them to focus, but it took half that time to realize exactly where he was. He immediately recognized the dank, sooty walls and the dark, murky waters that made up the sewers of his mind. However, the broken pipes were dripping a little faster than they were before, and he noticed with some alarm that the area around him was slowly darkening. 
The only consistent light was the familiar red glow resonating from his demon's cage around the corner. He briefly weighed his options, and decided that visiting him was a much better idea than waiting to see what happens next. Sighing loudly, he reluctantly dragged his feet towards his prisoner. After what seemed like hours of walking, he finally stood before the giant golden gates that held his true demon. A pair of glowing red eyes appeared from behind the bars, putting his worries to rest. I wonder how long has it been since we've last talked? A sinister voice coming from behind the gates was heard. How long has it been since we've last talked I wonder? A sinister voice coming from behind the gates was heard. Why are you suddenly talking to me again after all those years? Naruto asked, unsure about the last time he talked to his inner demon. Naruto watched quietly as the red glowing eyes coming from behind the cage appeared closer, thus revealing a large demon fox with nine tails. The seal was preventing me from communicating with you, the demon fox said as he looked down at him. Well, you didn't come here to chit chat with me did you, Kyubi? Naruto asked, looking at the demon fox with a serious expression. The demon fox smirked at him and lied on his stomach as he stuck his head against the gate to take a closer look at the blonde before him. Are you still reluctant to use my power? Why did you only use a tiny amount of my power during that last fight? When Naruto didn't reply, the Kyubi continued speaking in a taunting manner. Is it because of that woman? Are you afraid you'll end up killing her? Naruto let out a chuckle at that, and then glared at his inner demon. Leave her alone. His voice was menacing, much to the Kyubi's amusement. How naive of you. I already told you to not trust any humans, and you were doing fine taking my advice in consideration until you met her, why is that? She's different from the rest I've met, Naruto mumbled in a low voice, thinking about Sela. Indeed, her magic power is huge Kyubi started speaking, but was soon stopped by Naruto who kept going. Yeah her magic power is huge even if she's unaware of it but that's not what I meant. She's different in a way that she really care about someone like me and didn't reject me. I already told you brat, this way of thinking is exactly what will lead you to your demise, no our demise. Kyubi roared. Humans cannot be trusted. Remember all the times you were fooled because of that stupid side of yours. The times they nearly killed you but couldn't because I kept you alive with my powers. You're definitely right, I can't trust them at all, however something is different with her, Naruto gazed at his feet as he spoke. No matter how hard I try I can't bring myself to hate her, and whenever I stare into her eyes, the Kyubi stared at Naruto speechlessly as this one kept on talking. I can tell that she feels really lonely, just like me. Pathetic, it seems you still have some humanity left in you, Kyubi trailed off. That was true, the Kyubi was right. No matter how hard he tried to erase the remaining of his humanity he still couldn't do it, even after all these years. Well, I used to be human after all. But you're no longer it anymore. Do I have to remind you again who you truly are? Kyubi yelled aloud as he rose from his position and sat up. When Naruto didn't respond, the Kyubi slammed his claw against the cage separating him from Naruto. You and I became one. You became a demon the moment I was sealed inside you. You now bear the name of the demon known as Kyubi no Yoko. It's true that I became a demon the moment we merged, but that doesn't mean I am you. Naruto immediately replied. Being asleep for so long really damaged your memories huh? Kyubi let out. Naruto remained silent until he felt his body ache. He assumed that his body still hadn't recovered yet from that last fight. He looked over at Kyubi wondering if he should ask the beast's help in order to recover faster despite their short argument. The giant fox stared down at him then smirked amusingly. Look at how pathetic you are, in the end you always have to rely on my power and nothing else. We made a deal hundreds years ago didn't we? Freedom to feel anything I feel in exchange of your power. Naruto replied back. I really hate you. Kyubi said as he pointed his finger at the seal on the gates. Rip the seal a little bit more if you want more of my power. Naruto complied and soon a red aura seep out of the cage, bubbling up against Naruto's feet. Soon, the red aura hardened and grew, propelling him up toward the seal. Now facing the seal, Naruto carefully made a tiny tear on the corner of the small paper. The effect of immediate. A torrent of power shot towards the opposite wall, drowning the entire room in a malevolent sea of energy. Naruto found himself having a hard time breathing, let alone move in the fluctuation surge of power. Within a second, Naruto felt his body recovered and fully healed. The Kyubi roared in laughter at his shocked expression. 
What the hell is this? This is approximately a little above one hundredth of my power, brat. The Kyubi conceded with pride. This was impossible. It felt several times stronger than the power the Kyubi gave him back then. He knew the monster was strong, but this was ridiculous compared to what he thought. Destroyed that village of yours. Naruto blinked, realizing he'd completely missed what the fox said. Yeah, yeah, sure. You didn't hear a word I said, did you? The Kyubi sighed before speaking again. Don't use the magic of that black wizard again or else you'll end up relying on my power again. Sure thing. The way Naruto said it had been completely insincere, a fact that didn't go unnoticed by the fox. Well I'm off. Take that into consideration because the time will eventually come when you'll lose control over my power and go berserk, and when that happens I'll take over your body again. Naruto awoke to see Sela, dressed in the same clothes as the day before, kneeling in front of a fire, preparing breakfast for the two of them. He sat up and just watched her for a couple of minutes, studying the smooth and efficient way she moved. He could tell that there was something bothering her. As much as he wanted to pry, he knew that everyone had their secrets and rather keep it to themselves. Morning, she said, smiling at him over the flames. The blonde did not respond but instead stared directly into her eyes. Sela averted her eyes away from him before handing him a bowl filled with rice and tamagoyaki. She held up a nervous smile as she reached her hand out to him. Naruto blinked at the food, and hesitated for a second before accepting it. I hope it's to your liking. Where did you get this food from? Your home. Naruto asked curiously in an emotionless voice. Sela nodded at him and also grabbed her share before eating as well. Naruto grabbed his chopsticks and began digging in. His eyes widened widely right after swallowing a piece of the tamagoyaki. He marveled at how rich it tasted. Hell! This was even better than his usual cupped ramen. Naruto wasted no time anymore and began eating as fast as he could. Seeing the surprised look on Naruto's face, Sela began chuckling at him. If he wasn't too busy eating such amazing food, she was sure he definitely would have told her to shut up. It was good to see him in such a good condition again. Thinking of it, she wondered what kind of tricks he used to recover so fast already. When she woke up before him this morning, all wounds on his body had already healed, not to mention his fever. You look like you want to say something, he suddenly asked as she focused her attention back to him. When she didn't say anything, Naruto went on. It's about my recovery huh? This time she nodded. I was wondering just how you could recover so fast. I mean, even after I treated you shouldn't have been able to move for another day or more. I told you already not to worry about my physical condition but you kept insisting on helping me. Naruto replied back in a firm tone. Sela helped down her head and averted her gaze at the ground. I'm sorry, it's just that I couldn't leave you like that. Naruto sighed inwardly and turned his head away from her. You're wasting your time on me. With that, the blonde got up, grabbed his shirt that was lying on the ground and began heading toward the exit of the cave. I'm sorry if I bother you this much, I was just trying helping you. When will she stop with that? Feeling his anger building up, Naruto stopped walking and sighed loudly as he raised his power and crushed her with it. Sela was quickly brought down to her knees and gasping for air. Naruto walked over to her, crouched down, and faced her. Why bother with a demon like me? Because, you're alone like me, Sela breathed out. At that, Naruto was unable to let out a word. He released his power off her and looked away from her gaze. You don't know anything about me. I'm not weak and lonely like you. Of course I don't, however, you can't fool me Naruto-san. Sela put both her hands over his right one and gave it a soft grasp. Naruto suddenly felt his anger dissipating as her hands seemed to have helped him calm down. You're really a strange person, but I don't mind it. Aren't I? Sela softly smiled at him. Fine then. Until you believe you've returned the favor to me I'll allow you to stay with me. Naruto got up and walked out of the cave. Sela nodded as she grabbed her belongings and quickly followed after him. Where are we going Naruto-san? Sela asked as she caught up next to him. There are certain things I need to pick up in my house. Naruto replied back as he walked a bit ahead. But you destroyed your house along with a large portion of the forest when you used that spell of yours yesterday. Sela instantly replied back at him. Still we're going. There are important things I had there. Naruto looked at her over his shoulder. Sela nodded. If you say so. After a walking for a while, the two of them finally made it to their destination. 
Naruto's house was in pieces and all his belongings were scattered all over. Selo watched quietly as Naruto pushed away a broken chair and dug deeper into the debris. Found it. Naruto pulled out damaged box of ramen and threw it down on the ground. Take as much as you can and put them in your bag. Selah complied, opened the box and filled up her bag as much as she could. Then she glanced over at Naruto and noticed a black book in his hands. Curious. Selah went behind Naruto without being noticed and poked her head over his left shoulder. The black art magic. Her eyes widened as she was petrified to see Naruto in possession of such a dangerous book. Black art magic, there was no mistake. It was definitely a book written by the greatest black art user of all time mostly feared as Zarif. Sela spoke up in a shaky voice. Naruto-san, this is a book from the black mage Zarif. This book really helped me a lot, I learned lots of powerful spell because of it. Naruto said aloud. I see, that explains why you were able to use it during that last fight, Sela mumbled out in realization. Naruto narrowed his eyes at her and asked. What is up with you? Why are you shaking? You shouldn't any magic coming from that book do you know that? Anyone who uses it will be cursed for their whole life. Sela blurted out. Naruto's expression on his face remained unchanged. Her words didn't seem to have any effect on him at all as he grabbed the bag from her and shoved it inside. One more curse on me is not going to change anything since I was already cursed from start. Is it because you're a demon fox? Sela asked in a low voice, much to his surprise. When did you find out? Naruto didn't bother to face her as he started walking away. When you came at the village for ramen the other day. You saw all of that and yet you're still here with me? Naruto commented in an amused tone. I have nowhere else to go now since I'm now a traitor, in everyone's eyes at the village. Sela trailed off. She was correct. Right now she was nothing more than an outcast to everyone just like him now, someone without a place to return to. Staring at her with more attention. He noticed that she didn't have anything on her except a bag filled with nothing but his stuff inside. Naruto glanced at her and asked hesitantly, Is there anything you want to grab? Eh? Sela tilted her head aside. Is there anything ya, want to take from your house? Don't think I want to help your ass. It'll censored if you end up slowing me down from not having anything useful. Sela chuckled at his awkward way to show his kindness. Yes. There are lots of things I need to grab from there. Better be something useful, Naruto uttered as he allowed her to lead the way. Naruto quickly locked the door behind him after making sure that none of them were caught by the villagers. Sela was surprised at how intact her house was despite all the events that happened recently. While she was gone, she'd expected the village to inspect her house but it turned out that no one came here yet. That aside, she quickly made her way to her room in order to grab whatever she needed. Now inside her bedroom. She grabbed one of her backpack near her bed and began filling it with her clothing. Unknown to her, Naruto followed her and held one of her panties in his hands. This is pretty flexible, he commented as he stretched the fabric as much as he could and spun it around his index. Within a millisecond, Sela snatched her underwear from his hand and shouted in pure embarrassment as she turned reddish. Don't play with that. I didn't know this was so precious to you. Naruto told her in a blank tone and then reached out behind her to grab a bra. This one sure is really thin. Naruto commented as he observed it, further embarrassing Sela. Without a word, a heavily blushing Sela grabbed the item from his hands and shoved it inside her bag as deep as she could. After grabbing as much clothes as she could, Sela pulled out a small metallic box from under her bed, opened it and began counting the money she had saved over the years. Naruto glanced over at her, eyes widening when he caught sight of her money. That's quite a lot you have there. Naruto thought aloud as he stood beside her. Sela stopped on her counts, placed the money in one of the backpack's pockets and then nodded back at Naruto. Yes. I also noticed that you have a lot of books, Naruto mentioned as he took a random book from the bookshelf beside her closet and glanced on it. Yes, reading books is my favorite hobby. Sela replied as she stood up, ready to leave anytime. We may leave now. Let's move. Naruto mentioned as he opened the door leading outside. As soon as the blonde opened it, multiples arrows were sent into their direction. Naruto quickly shut the door, using it as a shield to cover himself and then reopened it. A large group of villagers armed was waiting outside. Naruto smirked at them, causing them all to back down a little. When they noticed Sela standing behind Naruto, they began cursing at her more than the demon himself. 
Selah hung her head down in shame, not wanting to make any eyes contact with them. All of you better go back to where you all came from if you don't want me to blow up this entire village like I did with the forest. Naruto spoke out loud, reminding them of the forest he ravaged recently. A major part of the villagers stared at each other, petrified by Naruto's threat while the rest of them wanted nothing more but to kill them on the spot. We shall kill you here and now. Naruto chuckled, and then began to laugh loudly at their empty threats. The villagers were suddenly crushed down by Naruto's demonic power as usual. Naruto stared at Sela, ordering her to escape as soon as he signals. Now, the black-haired teenager wasted no time and ran past the villagers as fast as she could while they were down on their knees. Some of them managed to shoot at Sela, but Naruto easily intercepted them before it could even reach her. Finally in the outskirts of the village, Sela slowed down and waited for Naruto. What's taking him long? She thought aloud. Naruto grabbed the head of the village by the neck and slammed him down on the ground. He then lifted him up in the air once more. This is my farewell gift. That being said, Naruto tossed the man aside, leaving him dead. The villagers all cowered in fear and returned back to their home, much to Naruto's amusement. Now finally alone, Naruto jumped up on a building and observed the village from there. A nostalgic feeling ran through him when he perceived the demolished building of the orphanage he used to live in. The time he'd spent there as a child were undoubtedly his most pleasant memories. Farewell. Naruto thought to himself, taking one more glance at it before taking his leave. He hated to admit it, but he sure was going to miss this place a little. After a short while, the two eventually met and discussed about their current situation. We have nowhere else to go. Sela nodded in agreement with the blonde. What do you think we should do now? Naruto asked. Sela stiffened when he addressed her. She didn't expect him to actually ask for her opinion since he was most likely the one in charge. Naruto stared intensely at her as if to rush her, and Sela couldn't help but feel slightly pressured. One of the things that crossed her mind when he asked was to travel around the continent, but knowing him, he probably wouldn't agree on that. Seeing her debating with herself, Naruto decided to bring it out of her by asking one more time. I was wondering if we could, travel Fury, she replied hesitantly. Travel the continent? Clueless, Naruto asked. Sela smiled nervously at him. I think it'll be great, Naruto-san. Do you think we will be able to find a way to go to Ilakatasia? Naruto thought to himself, much to Sela's confusion. Ilakatasia. What for? She wondered curiously. Naruto shook his head as a gesture to tell her to forget what he just said. At that, Sela didn't question it any longer and dropped the matter. How far is Fury to Ilakatasia? Caught up in deep thoughts, he failed to hear Sela talking about their plans. It took Sela's waving hand in front of his face to make him react and pay attention to her. You were saying? Sela gave out a sigh before speaking again. I was saying that it could be a great idea for us to travel around the continent until you find a place to settle. Naruto brought his hand under his chin as he took a thinking, pose and looked at Sela. Traveling sure wasn't a bad idea at all. By doing so, he probably would be able to find answers to all his questions. However there was still a problem that bothered him quite a lot. If they were to travel across the land then he undoubtedly will have to meet humans for sure, and he did not want any more problems with them again. However, seeing the look on Sela's face made him unable to deny her request. When Naruto nodded in agreement, Sela excitedly threw her arms around his neck and hugged him. His first impulse was to shove her away but noticing on how strong her grip was on him, he decided not to move and accepted it. Upon realizing her own action, Sela blushed, as she removed herself from the blonde and apologized. Naruto didn't say anything but instead scoffed at her, to which she returned with a nervous smile as she narrowed her eyes elsewhere. Remember that I only agree to accept your idea because you took care of me yesterday. I'm just returning the favors so don't misunderstand and think I was considering your feeling. Naruto warned her as he turned away from her and walked ahead. Before we go, Naruto spoke up, causing Sela to look at him from the back. Do you know how to use magic? Naruto fully turned to face her. A. Hey. No, why? Sela asked. Your magic power, Naruto marched up to her and placed his right hand on her chest. You're unaware of it but you have such strong magic power. Sela blushed furiously when his hand made contact with her chest. She was fully aware that he wasn't doing it on purpose but still, it made her feel so uneasy. If he wasn't extremely serious at the moment, she definitely would have yelled at him for touching her so carelessly again. Regardless of that, 
she also was quite interested in whatever he was implying. Really? Then can I use magic? She asked abruptly. Of course you can but you need to learn how to. Naruto replied. Can you teach me magic then? Sayla pleaded and shot him her best puppy dog eyes. I only know how to use black magic, other than that I use curses, except for, Naruto reluctantly trailed off, causing Sayla's hope to degrade. I know very few magic like telekinesis and projection magic. Teach them to me, whatever it is, Sayla exclaimed. Unfortunately, his expression remained largely unchanged, and he started walking off again. If you teach me magic I'm sure I'll be able to assist you more than if I don't know anything. That was true. She did have a point there, if she knew some magic then she'll definitely be able to help him. However, having an enormous magic power also didn't mean that one could use magic. And if she happened to be one of these cases then teaching her magic would be pointless and a waste of time. Fine. I'll teach you how to use magic, that way you can help me more efficiently. So you better be able to keep up. Thank you very much. If she hadn't done it previously, Sayla would have definitely jumped all over the blonde again to show him how happy she was. But instead of doing that, she reached out her hand to him with a big smile featuring her beautiful face. From now on, let's travel and have fun, Naruto-san. Naruto. Just call me Naruto from now on, Naruto looked away, slightly embarrassed as he accepted her hand. Normally, he wouldn't let anyone address him so casually but since she was gonna stick with him for a while then he might as well just allow her. With pleasure, Naruto, she said, the smile never leaving her face. Oddly enough, he found himself smiling back. Yeah. Let's take a step forward into our lives. And with that, the two of them began their new adventures. Shaped as a cube, Cube was a gigantic island that harbored several rocky terrains spread on its surface. Standing among the rocky landscape, was a building taking the form of a giant, slight ruined, castle. The structure itself was very big in size, containing at least three separated sections all atop one another. The two main bodies of the castle were visibly squarer in shape and decorated with numerous crenellations, the turrets and roof were also more curved. Two large statues were also standing next to the frontal gates. Surrounding the Tartaro's headquarters and protruding from the rock were several spines appearing quite large in size. The gates of the fortress opened slowly, revealing a dark figure walking forward. The newcomer walked out of the shade, thus revealing a demon named Kyoka. She was a demon with a very distinct appearance, most notably due to her half-human and half-aviary characteristics. She appeared to be of an average height and weight, except for her extraordinary large chest and curvaceous figure. She wore a skin-tight suit that emphasized her chest, revealed her thighs and exposed her buttocks. Her shoulders and arms were concealed by a long, striped jacket with flaring sleeves, and a tall and gaping collar that completely concealed her neck. Kiyoka's hands were sharp with scaly claws. Her feet were akin to a bird's, while her legs were completely covered with a band wrap. Kiyoka's head was adorned with a helmet, covering almost the entirety of her face in exception of her eyes and mouth. On the sides of the helmet, two long wing-like pieces of hair was hanging, curving out around her face. Kiyoka's hair were also noticeable as they fell from the back of the helmet as well, passing through her hood, down to her lower back and wrapped tightly into a thick band. What brings you back here, Dory 8? Kiyoka asked, looking down at her subordinate kneeing in front of her. It's about Uzumaki Naruto. The demon replied, what about him? Did you learn something interesting? She asked to which he nodded in response. Uzumaki Naruto has made the decision to leave his place and travel the continent. Doriate spoke as he looked up at his superior. Kiyoka looked back down at him in confusion, is that true? Yes. Doriate nodded back. Oh, I forgot to mention that he's currently in company of a human girl. Kiyoka's eyes widened even more at that. A human girl? Doriate continued speaking. Yes, from what I have seen he decided to take her along. What do you suggest we do? Kiyoka brought a hand to her chin and began thinking about the current turns of event. In all honesty, she'd never expected Naruto to take such decision or be with a human being even less. If Doriate was saying the truth, which was most likely the case then everything she'd planned overtime for Naruto would go to waste without any doubt. Keep doing your job and watch over him and that human girl. As you wish. Dory 8 jumped on his flying creature and flew off away. When he was out of sight, Kiyoka shut the gates and returned inside the castle. As she walked in the hallways, she constantly found her mind thinking about what Dory 8 just reported. Oddly, 
her body trembled each time she thought about it. What she was experiencing at the moment was a feeling of great enthusiasm and eagerness. A smirk made its way on her face when she realized exactly what it was. Is this what human calls, excitement, interesting, truly interesting? Several hours had passed already since their departure. Naruto and Sela were currently walking down a rocky path leading to a small town. The two of them were exhausted from not being used to such trip. Upon hearing Naruto, stomach growling, Sela decided that it would be a great idea to make a stop at the village ahead of them. The blonde was reluctant at first since he wasn't comfortable with the idea of hanging around humans, but eventually accepted it. Now in town, Sela decided to look for a place to rest and enjoy the food they've packed before the trip started. As Naruto walked the busy street of the town, he caught few people murmuring things about his current look. Naruto frowned and looked down at his garments, searching for anything out of the ordinary. I really need a new set of clothes. Nevertheless, the blonde didn't bother to react back since he knew it would only create conflicts. Naruto. He turned around at the voice and saw Sela running to him as she waved her hands. I found a place to rest. Naruto nodded as he marched up forward to her. Lead the way. Sela nodded and gestured him to follow her. Following right behind her, Naruto couldn't help but feel uneasy at the thought of being surrounded by so many people. Especially since they were all glancing their way. Suddenly, Sela held his hand and began walking faster, startling him. He immediately tried to stop her but she didn't listen and continued walking. Naruto let out a sigh and agreed her to let her do as she pleased. After five minutes of walking, they arrived in front of a small shelter. Sela opened the door of the building and walked in along with Naruto. I'm back, do you have my reservation ready? Sela politely asked the owner of the place. The old man nodded and called out his daughter to take care of her and Naruto. Akemi, can you show them their room? Sela san. It's ready. Please follow me. A young lady around her age spoke up with a bright smile as she came out of another room. Akemi was very beautiful. She had sky blue hair, chocolate brown eyes, and was well endowed. She was wearing a simple white shirt with a long black skirt that reached her knees and green low heel. Thank you again for choosing this place. It's no problem at all, we are the one thanking you. Sela returned the smile and then bowed down her head. Thank you. For what? Naruto asked aloud, looking at Sela then at the other girl. I'll never be thankful to anyone especially a who. Sela quickly covered his mouth before he could even mumble the last word and apologized. Please forget what he said. The girl threw her arms in front of her in a defensive manner. Please do not worry about it. Your boyfriend must have had a long tiring day. You've been traveling a lot after all from what I heard from my parents. Boyfriend? Upon hearing it, Sela blushed madly but still managed to keep a straight face. The idea of Naruto being her boyfriend wasn't so bad, what could she say to that? Sure, she liked him well enough but to have him one. Even if she tried, she couldn't picture herself actually skipping through a field of daisies with him, holding hands like lovers and smiling at each other with heartfelt desire. Hell. She'd kill herself if she ever seriously pictured such a sweet and cliché scene from those romance books she had. Naruto and I are not in this kind of relationship, we are more like traveling partners. I see, I see. This must be great. Akemi said excitedly as she clasped both her hands with sparkling eyes. Enjoy your stay here. If there's anything I can help you with let me know. Akemi gave the key to Sela before taking her leave. Let's go in already. Naruto took the key off Sela's hand and opened it. This is better than my place. Naruto commented, glancing around as he entered the room. Despite the room being small, everything inside was very well cleaned and nice looking. A large bed, fitting at least two people was placed in the corner of the room with a small desk standing beside with a table lamp on top of it. A light purple curtain was hanging on one side of the only window present in the room. Sela immediately put down all their belongings on the wooden floor and began searching for anything to eat. She pulled out a cup of ramen and handed to Naruto before grabbing herself a can of food. Naruto grabbed the ramen from her, walked out of the room to ask the owners for some boiling water. Hey, I need boiling water my ramen, he demanded. In a minute, Akemi came back with a pot containing hot water and gave it to Naruto. Hum. Was all Naruto let out as a response as he took the pot and poured water for his ramen. I'm done. Akemi nodded as she gladly took back the pot and headed back to the shelter's kitchen. Oh by the way, if you guys ever need to bath it is right over there. She pointed her finger to the wooden door behind the counter. 
Naruto didn't even bother to reply back and instead went back to his room. Sayla was still enjoying her food while reading the notes Naruto gave her when they were on the road about magic power control. Still looking at these notes? Sayla shifted her eyes at his direction and nodded. Yes, I would like to learn how to control my magic power as soon as possible. Naruto shoved a large portion of noodles into his mouth and sat down beside her to help. Close your eyes, and focus on nothing else but that power inside of you. Sayla complied and did as she was told. Naruto watched silently, as he continued chewing on his food. His eyes widened in surprise when he felt her magic power increased abundantly. There was no words to describe how much surprised he was at the moment. He'd never expect her to get the hang of it and to succeed on her first attempt. After a while, Sayla slowly opened her eyes and smiled proudly at herself. You're really a strange person. Naruto trailed off, his eyes never leaving hers. You actually learned much faster than me. I'm a fast learner. Sayla stated matter-of-factly. Good for me. At least I now know that you're capable. Naruto thought aloud, much to Sayla's amusement. By the way, what makes you decide for this place? Naruto asked as he grabbed water from Sayla's packs. This place is depressing, just looking at it reminds me of that village. Sayla nodded in agreement. I can't agree more, however, I chose this place because the people here are in need. Naruto looked at her with a blank face as she continued. They're doing their best to keep this place going despite being poor. Sayla finished, thinking about her parents. I want to help them even if it's a little. Your way of thinking is something that I could never understand no matter how hard I try. Naruto shrugged. Anyways, I want to see what this town's got. Naruto got up and opened the door leading outside. He stopped midway when he noticed Sayla wasn't moving at all. Aren't you coming? Sayla hesitated for a second, but nodded in return. Sure, I would like to. Hurry up then. Naruto shouted aloud, already walking outside of the shelter. Sayla hurriedly locked their room before heading. Akemi-san, we'll be back later. She said as she turned at the concerned person and slightly bowed. Have fun. Akemi shouted in return. As they walked through the busy street of the town, Sayla noticed Naruto becoming calmer with each minute's passing. Ever since they arrived here, he was in caution of his surroundings at all times. Now it was different, seeing Naruto relaxed, brought a smile on her face. Even, if he kept denying, he still looked exactly the same as used to when relaxed. Thinking of it, she wondered what Naruto's life was like before he entered her parents' orphanage. All she knew from him was that his parents were deceased. Aside from that, she knew nothing more. I have a question, Naruto. Naruto glanced at her over his shoulder as he continued walking ahead. What is it? Sayla hesitated a little bit but forced herself to speak up. How was your life before? Before I joined your parents' orphanage. Naruto stepped in and finished her question in her stead. Yes, Sayla replied. Naruto stopped walking, fully turning his body around to face her. Why are you suddenly asking me that? Sayla narrowed her eyes away. I'm curious, that's all. Naruto intensified his stare at her, trying to look for any interior motive she had, but couldn't see anything. Finally, he sighed and answered truthfully. I don't remember anything. Are you suffering amnesia? Sayla blurted out at his statement. Naruto quickly covered her mouth, preventing them from drawing people's attention. Shish. Sayla stayed frozen in place, taking in Naruto's answer as he removed his hand from her mouth. Obviously, she expected him not to tell her everything, but to actually suffer amnesia. This was beyond her expectations above all. What surprised her most was that he definitely wasn't lying about it because of how serious he sounded when he said it. Naruto Uzumaki, surely he never fails to surprise her. Unexpectedly, Naruto leaned his face forward at hers, causing Sayla to break free from her thoughts and back away a bit. The only thing I remember is waking up nearby the village. I see. Sayla mumbled in understanding. Let's move now. Naruto ordered, walking ahead of her. Sayla complied, all the while thinking about him. When Naruto stopped, she shot her head up and looked at him confusedly. Lead the way, I have no interest in this town, there isn't anything I need. You, on the other hand probably have things you need, so go ahead. Leave it to me. Sayla replied and gladly took the lead. I'm going to search for a grocery market. She said, to which Naruto nodded. Yeah, yeah whatever. This time around, Naruto was the one to study Sayla. He'd never give it much thought about it before, but having Sayla's presence at his side really made him happy. 
Ever since he'd met her, he no longer feels alone like he used to. Even if he always had hated the idea of siding with a human, it was different with her. He actually didn't mind it at all. And of course, just like her, he had questions on his own concerning her. We can make a stop here. Sela stopped in front of a rather tall building. Instead of following Sela, Naruto stopped to wait outside the store. However, she was against the idea of letting him wait for her and ended up dragging him along with her. He tried his best to tell her that he wasn't good when interacting with people and that it was best for him to stay aside but she wouldn't listen to any of his words. I'm not good when it comes to dealing with humans, Naruto complained at Sela, who was currently looking at some vegetables. Are you listen to me? Naruto blurted out. Hi. Sela replied, not taking the effort to face him as she was still debating on which vegetables to buy. Goddammit. How long am I gonna stay here? After what seemed like hours of shopping, Sela finally managed to buy all the goods she needed. Naruto followed Sela down the path leading to their shelter. Upon noticing Sela's cheerful expression, Naruto felt his lips twitched upward into a smile. A lot of crazy stuff today. Yes. Sela replied with a smile of her own. I guess we're going to do stuff like that a lot since we're traveling. He added, earning a nod from Sela. By the way Naru. Sela never got to finish her sentence as she tripped over a rock, causing her to drop the shopping bags and fall down on her rear. This is totally my luck today, she whispered while picking up the bags and wiping the dirt off her kimono. Oh no, she glanced over at her foot which was missing the left pair of her sandals. Here, I don't think it's usable anymore though. Naruto threw her sandals so she could have a look at it. Just as Naruto said, there was no way she could wear it again now that the strings were ripped off. Sela frowned sadly. It was her favorite ones out of all the pairs she used to possess. It was my last pair. Don't you have a spare? Naruto asked. Sela shook her head as a response while still looking at the object. Never mind that, let us go. As they continued walking, Naruto noticed Sela slowing down with each steps. Obviously, her left foot was hurting and bleeding slightly. To her surprise, Naruto bent down in front of her. Get on my back, I'll give you a ride. He stated doing his best not to be embarrassed at his own words. I'm not doing it for you. I can't have you in a bad shape especially when you haven't been of any use to me yet. I'm fine. I can walk on my own. Sela blushed madly and continued walking, only to be stopped by Naruto who threw her over his right shoulder. I guess we can go like that too. Let go of me Naruto. This is unpleasant. Sela pounded his back in attempt to let him go but he wasn't having any of it. Seeing at how pointless it was, Sela had no choice but to agree on his decision. I'd rather ride on your back than in such manner. At that, Naruto gently set her back down on her feet and bent over once more, allowing her to proceed. Though, before she could get on his back, he seized her hurting foot and applied pressure on it. Sela winced slightly in pain while confused by his action. Much to her surprise, her foot started to feel a lot better. What have you done? I used some of my curse power to heal your cuts. Get on. Naruto looked over Sela, who was in awe with one hand on her face and blushing madly. Let me handle the shopping bags too. Naruto grabbed the bags as Sela climbed on him. Why did you do such thing? A voice rang in his mind, causing him to freeze on the spot. This voice, it was undoubtedly his annoying voice. What do you want? Naruto asked a little annoyed. Don't waste my healing power on someone ever again, even if it's a tiny bit. The Kyubi stated in a displeased tone. Leave me alone. I'm the one that's deciding here. Naruto mentally replied back as he began running back to their shelter, with Sela on his back. Within a minute, they were already there. Naruto burst the door open, startling the personal working inside, which included Akemi and her parents before going in their room. You can get off now. Naruto crouched down, letting Sela get off. Thank you for your concern, Naruto. No need to thank me. Naruto replied back, as he jumped on the bed to rest. I need to take a bath, I believe they have a small hot spring if I remember correctly. Sela walked over her pack, and pulled out some fresh clothes from it before heading out of their room. May I know where the hot spring is? Sela asked Akemi, who was standing behind the counter. Sela san. It's right over there. Akemi pointed at a wooden gate right behind her. Thank you. Sela gratefully replied and took her leave. So. Why was he giving you a piggyback earlier? He looked mighty eager to get back up to your room. Is he really your boyfriend after all? 
Akemi asked with a grinning face as she scooted closer to Sayla. Before Sayla could answer, a loud sigh was heard from the shelter's owner. Akemi, stop badgering the poor girl. She's paying pretty decent money for her stay. Akemi pouted but complied, crossing her arms under her chest like a five-year-old. You never let me have any fun. Here I was just trying to help a customer out, and you have to butt into my business. Sayla almost laughed at the irony. I was just going to share a few beauty tips with her, I swear. She turned her attention back to Sayla, almost as if she'd forgotten her mother's warning. Anyway, if you want to keep a guy like him interested, you're going to have to put more effort into your appearance. Feeling slightly insulted, Sayla frowned deeply and narrowed her eyes at the clerk. Sayla was pretty confident about her own appearance. She was beautiful, had a pretty nice curves, and not to mention that her censors were decent in size too. What's that supposed to mean? She asked, her body unconsciously tensing up. Akemi raised a placating hand to calm the girl down. Don't get me wrong, you're very beautiful and attractive, but quite frankly, your hair censors. It's limp, disorderly, and more likely than not, full of knots. Akemi giggled slightly at the small pun. Hold on, I'll be right back. With that, she hopped out of the hot springs and disappeared into the tiny wooden changing room near the gated entrance. Akemi's mother turned her head to look at Sayla with a mildly amused and apologetic smile. Run while you still can, she whispered, loud enough for her daughter to hear it. Akemi frowned at her mother as she emerged from the small building, and with a towel, thankfully, wrapped around her body, she sat on the rock next to Sayla. Haha, very funny, mother. I'll have you know that I am an excellent hairstylist. How do you think I got my hair this shiny? Akemi exclaimed, holding up what looked like a bath set. Sayla sunk deeper into the soothing hot water of the springs. Fine, she mumbled, relaxing her mind enough to let someone else touch her. Pleased, Akemi ran the comb through Sayla's hair, every now and then stopping to force out a knot or mess of tangles. She couldn't see anything since the woman was behind her, but it certainly felt like she knew what she was doing. Her hands moved through the long, thick hair with practiced ease, and in a matter of minutes, she had the hair completely straight and smooth. Next, Akemi dumped a generous amount of liquid onto the girl's hair. Whatever it was smelled sweet, and taking a deeper whiff of the substance, Sayla was able to pinpoint a mix of strawberry, honey, and kiwi. Akemi then lathered her hair up using the water from the springs, working to get out all of the dirt and grime that had built up since her last trip with Naruto. She wasn't quite finished yet, as she dunked Sayla's head under the water to rinse, and immediately set to work combing the hair once again. Why are you doing this? Sayla questioned, asking what had been burning in her mind ever since she started. She wasn't used to random acts of kindness, but then again, she'd never exactly lived in the best of places. Akemi continued to comb through her hair, sighing slightly in response. No real reason. A mixture of boredom and curiosity mostly. Curiosity? Although she couldn't see it, the shelter clerk grinned widely and nodded. To see how that boy of yours will react. If he doesn't notice at all, he's not worth your time. Okay. Sayla almost choked on her own saliva. Naruto? Hers? She didn't even know if Naruto even considered her a friend, so to be considered as lovers? Yeah, not likely. Akemi finished combing Sayla's hair and stood up, stretching a little to get some circulation in her tired hands and forearms. Just let it air dry when you're ready to get out, and it'll be nearly as shiny as mine. You can keep the shampoo and conditioner if you'd like. It's all yours. Akemi laughed loudly, walking towards the exit. Well, I have other things to take care of. Tell me how it goes. Sayla watched amazed as the clerk simply waltzed out of the bath area, wearing nothing but a skimpy white towel over her mildly plump frame. Akemi was gone before she even had the chance to utter a word of thanks. She absent mindedly ran a hand through her freshly washed hair, testing to see how good of a job Akemi had done. It certainly felt better than it had only 15 minutes before, and it almost felt like fine silk as it slid through her fingers. To be honest, she couldn't wait to see how it turned out. I'm very sorry about my daughter, the older woman sighed, opening her eyes to look at the girl. She's always liked to help out people and interact a lot with them. Sayla blinked, but nodded nonetheless. It's not like it bothered her anyways. Sayla soaked in the bath for another half hour before deciding to head back to her room. This place looks quite lovely, don't you think? Dory 8, who was riding on his demonic creature thought to himself as he looked at the town below. 
The familiar smell of ramen wafted into the bedroom, slowly rousing the boy from his slumber. Lifting his nose into the air, Naruto hopped to his feet and followed the enticing aroma, drooling more and more as he neared the kitchen. He rounded the corner to see a woman standing boringly in front of two small burner stoves, slowly stirring something in a large pot. Carefully, he snuck up behind the oblivious redhead, his grin widening with each mischievous step. Ramen. Ka Chan is amazing. Good morning, Naruto. The redhead woman greeted the boy as she turned around. Naruto shot out of the bed, eyes widened. He ran a hand through his hair, trying to make heads and tails from the dream he just had. That red haired woman from his dream was certainly his mother, right? He was sure of it. How strange, he'd never had a dream about his past up until now, so why now of all times? Could it be? He glanced at Sayla, who was sleeping soundlessly next to him. It had to be her, because of what she'd asked him the day before. Don't be too friendly with me, he said, continuing to frown at her. In the back of his mind, he felt somewhat foolish for talking to a girl that couldn't even hear him. Suddenly, Sayla stirred a little bit and unconsciously hugged his left arm to her chest. Naruto found himself glancing at her for a moment, noticing how unguarded she looked when sleeping, just like an infant. He grunted in slight annoyance when he felt a wet substance dripping onto his arm. Of course, she was still a drooler. Tired, Naruto decided to go back to sleep and not think too much about the dream he had. Indeed, he needed nothing more but a good sleep right now. Sunlight streamed into the small, plain room, jovially announcing the start of another day. Birds chirped merrily from their perches among the tree branches while civilians alike began their morning routines. A particularly persistent beam of light landed squarely on Sayla's face, rousing the girl from her well-deserved slumber. She attempted to open her eyes, but quickly regretted as she slammed her palms over her highly sensitive eyes. Apparently she wasn't quite used to the light yet, and a direct shot from the sun didn't help the matter. After waiting a couple of minutes for them to adjust, she slowly opened her eyes again and smiled. Sayla pushed herself into a sitting position and looked out of the large room window. Everything was so much more vivid and colorful than her old village. Yawning tiredly, she stretched her arms high above her head as she censored it in a large breath of air. She let loose the breath she'd been holding and then looked over the other side of the bed. Naruto was clearly awake but was forcing himself back to sleep, tightly shutting his eyes as he moved constantly to find the right position. Unable to sleep any longer, Naruto let out a groan as he finally decided to wake up. Damn, I can't even get a decent sleep nowadays. Sayla nervously smiled at him as she nodded in response. Good morning, Naruto. Yo. Naruto emotionlessly greeted back as he sat up. So, what's for today? Sayla asked as she leaned toward Naruto who was now in deep thought. I don't know. Let's get something to eat first. I'm quite hungry. Naruto finally replied as he got off the bed, causing Sayla to let out a sigh. Naruto reached out for the pack leaning on the side of the bed and pulled out one of the cups of ramen he's stored. Get this ready for me. Naruto ordered as he passed the food to Sayla who nodded in return. We're gonna start your training after we're done eating. I'm looking forward to it. Sayla replied with slight excitement. This will be tough. I won't go easy on you. Naruto scoffed and turned his head away from her. Yes. She replied as she walked out of the room. As Sayla walked down the stairs, she met up with Akemi, who seemed to be rather excited to see her. So how did it go? Did he notice how beautiful your hair had become? The clerk asked excitedly as she latched an arm around Sayla's shoulders and leaned closer. Don't tell me he didn't even notice. Akemi exclaimed in horror when seeing Sayla's unchanged expression. I don't even think he noticed. Sayla nervously smiled with a pang of disappointment. Naruto isn't like that. He even saw me naked once but didn't react at all, as soon as the words left her mouth, she regretted them. Her face turned crimson as she realized exactly what she just blurted out. Sayla immediately threw her hands in front of her in a defensive manner. I didn't mean that. I meant he accidentally walked in on me while I was bathing and... Akemi could not help but grin at her. Sayla tried to find the words to justify herself. I get it, I get it, Sayla san It seems you two are closer than I thought. She said in a teasing manner, further embarrassing Sayla. Relax, I'm just kidding with you. Akemi gave out a laugh and patted Sayla's back. I'm pretty sure he'll notice soon enough. If if you say so. Sayla stuttered, still blushing a little. I'm sure he will. 
Akemi reassured her happily. Sayla nodded back at her before walking past Akemi to grab the hot water pot resting on the counter. She poured the hot liquid into the ramen cup and headed straight back to their room. Sayla gently set the ramen cup on the tea table and looked over at Naruto who was currently busy reading Zarif's book. What was so interesting about this book? She wondered. Naruto eyed her for a second before returning back into his studying. Got it ready? Sayla grabbed the cup of ramen and handed it to Naruto. Here. Good. Without looking, Naruto lazily reached for his food, but felt resistance into Sayla's grip. Huh, he fully turned, and noticed Sayla holding the cup firmly. She didn't seem to want to let go of him for some odd reason. What are you playing? Aren't you going to thank me for it? Sayla shot back, slightly upset at his lack of manner. Thanks, he exclaimed, but Sayla clearly could tell he truly wasn't. You're so helpless, Sayla released a loud sigh as she passed him the ramen cup. Do you mind if I sit next to you? Not at all, he replied before filling up his whole mouth full with noodles. Sayla leaned closer to him to take a closer look at his book. She knew it was wrong for her part to stick her nose into his business, but she couldn't help it. She liked to read books, especially ones that involve supernaturals. Zarif's book or not she wanted to see the contents inside. This is written in ancient language. Impressive Naruto. I didn't know you could read an old language. She had seen it before even though she didn't particularly know how to read it. If she wasn't mistaken this language was used centuries ago. But what bothered her most was how it was possible for him to read it without any trouble. As far as she knew, the language had been long forgotten. Sayla glanced suspiciously at him, gathering all the information she knew about him. He claims to be a demon, he lost most of his memories, he uses this thing he calls, curses, he's in possession of one of Zarif's books and can even read a forgotten language without any trouble. Sayla's eyes widened in shock as she summed up all her thoughts into one possible answer about who Naruto really might be. Naruto. What? Naruto turned to her and noticed the mortified look on her face. What's with this face? Could you be one of these demons Zarif created, a demon from the Book of Zarif? Naruto immediately dropped the book down and fell into a silent state. Sayla was knocked out of her reverie by a silent chuckle. The chuckle grew into full on laughter, and before long, Naruto was gasping for breath. What made you actually think I was one of those pathetic Aetherius? Naruto panted between breaths. Sayla stared at the blonde with something akin to awe. Aetherius? So you're not a demon then? Sayla asked, still unable to comprehend his reaction. I am. Naruto added. Then what kind of demon are you exactly? Sayla inquired, much to Naruto's annoyance. Why are you suddenly asking me so much stuff? I'd like to know more about it and you. Sayla replied right away, causing the blonde to let out a sigh. Me? You already know about me. You seem to know a lot about Zarif. I find it strange for you to know so much about him, especially since you told me you suffered from amnesia. Sayla continued. It's complicated. My memories are still fuzzy but I would rather not talk about it. You don't need to know anything about Zarif and I. Naruto trailed off before returning to his previous activity. I understand. I'm sorry, Sayla muttered in dissatisfaction. Let's get ready for your first training lesson. Meet me at the entrance of the town, the one we took to get in. Naruto tossed the book on their bed and stretched out his body. Sayla marched up toward her bag in order to get ready. Understood. Don't take too long. With that, Naruto walked out and left Sayla alone in their room. After making sure he was away, Sayla grabbed Zarif's book and opened it. She scanned through a few pages quickly before stopping into one that caught her attention. Unlike the rest of the pages, this one was written in modern language. Law? Curse of contradictions? What is that? She read a few lines before realizing that it was nothing more but a powerful spell. I wonder if Naruto can use all the magic from this book. She tossed the book back on the bed and walked out to meet up with Naruto. As Sayla walked outside the busy streets, her mind was constantly set on Naruto. The way he talked about Zarif earlier made him sound almost as if he knew the man personally. However, that couldn't be possible since Zarif existed 400 years ago and she had known Naruto since they were children. But then again, he was able to read long forgotten languages only people knew centuries ago. There was no way someone from this time period could have possibly taught him, especially since he was at odds with everyone he met. Sayla felt like pulling her hair out from all the nonsenses. 
So many things Naruto said didn't add up at all. Perhaps she was simply thinking too hard about him. Oh well, whoever Naruto used to be in the past didn't really matter. Right now, she only needed to know more about his current self and nothing else. She quickly joined up with Naruto in the outskirts of the town which was an ordinary open field with grass and trees. She could not help but feel a little excited at the thought of training with him. From what they've already discussed a day prior he planned to teach her telekinesis and projection magic. Come sit down over here with me. Naruto gestured as he sat on the grass holding a bag full of junks. We're going to start with the easiest magic for you to learn, which is telekinesis. He continued as he pulled out a tree branch, stones, metal junks, and placed it in front of him. Sayla sat down and focused on her partner. Telekinesis is. I already know, it's a type of magic that allows its user to move and take control of things with their mind and use them for whatever purpose they wish. Sayla interrupted. Right. Let's get started. Naruto replied back. Basically what you need to do first is channel your magic power from within. Do you still remember yesterday when I showed you? It's the same basic. Naruto explained as he grabbed the metal pipe in front of him. Once you've done that, you have to focus your mind on the object you want to control. Sayla watched Naruto attentively. You make it sound so easy. It's really not that hard to learn. Let me show you quickly. Naruto responded. With that, Naruto slightly raised his own power and focused his mind on the metal pipe. The object slowly lifted itself from the grass and started floating around both him and Sayla. See? Right now I'm controlling it to float around us. I'll try right away. Excited, Sayla picked up one of the stones and held it firmly on her right palm and started focusing. She closed her eyes, remembering the quick training session she had with Naruto the day prior. She inhaled, then exhaled deeply as she emptied her mind and focused solely on herself. A few seconds later, she felt something ignite within her. It felt very powerful, like a rush of adrenaline, and it was spreading throughout her entire body. Her lips twitched upward in a smile as she could feel magic flowing through her body. She slowly opened her eyes, then focused her mind on the stone she was holding. I can do it. Naruto watched her in amusement as she could not budge the stone one bit. He started chuckling when she started groaning and making funny faces. This was rather entertaining. She was usually very collected and calm in every manner. And here she was, slowly losing her temper over something so simple. What's so funny? You're supposed to be encouraging me. Sayla expressed in frustration as she continued trying to control the object with her mind. I actually never thought of you getting angry. He said, taking a seat next to her. Let me help you. Naruto placed his hand under hers and applied his own magic power. You have to apply your own magic power on the object as well. See? It's floating. But I thought you only had to use your mind to do that. Sayla asked, slightly confused at his claim. Sayla, the air is filled with magic particles called Athernano. It's also inside of us and allows us to use magic. I'm sure you know that right? Naruto turned to look at Sayla to which she nodded. I forgot to tell you in detail but you must connect your own magic power with the magic particles in the air. Once that connection is formed then you need to direct that into the object you want to control using your mind. I see, it makes more sense now, she commented. Feel the flow of magic in the air. Once more, Sayla mimicked exactly her previous steps up until the point where she'd previously failed. She was determined to make it work this time around. Failure was not an option at all cost. As soon as she felt her magic power rising rapidly within her body, she took yet again a deep breath in order to sense the magic surrounding her. Immediately, she mentally released her magic power and allowed it to freely connect with the magic particles in the air. Naruto speechlessly watched on the sideline as his partner managed to successfully connect her own magic power with the magic floating in the air. She was indeed a fast learner like she mentioned. However, what impressed him furthermore was how vast her magic power felt. He already knew it was beyond average but he surely did not expect it to increase that much in such a short time. If he had anything to compare, it was definitely not too far away from those two morons he defeated a couple days ago, which said a lot considering how much of a pain in the butt they were to deal with. Undoubtedly, if she managed to fully control her magic power and use it effectively in combat situations, then she could become a remarkable fighter. You're doing it. Direct your magic toward the object to control it he advised as he kept watching. Sayla nodded, then focused her magic and mind toward the object in her hand. 
Her eyes widened in surprise upon seeing the object floating. She did it. She gave her blonde companion a glance, waiting for his response. In return, Naruto gave her a thumbs up and flashed her a warm smile. She smiled, feeling proud of her accomplishment. She waved her arm left and right, moving the object along in the same directions she wished. It felt much easier to control the object with hand motions than it was mentally. She continued playing around with the object for a full minute in order to get used to it. How does it feel? Naruto asked. Sayla finally released her grip on the item. It felt unbelievable. Right? But we are not done yet. This is only the beginning. You still need to learn to control multiple objects at the same time. Naruto stood up and opened his arms. In a millisecond, all the objects were lifted off the ground and began circling around him. Sayla stared at him in a blank expression. He was definitely showing off. It seems I have a long way to go. Naruto shook his head. Sayla, do you realize that you're a genius? Sayla tilted her head aside. A genius. Her. She was aware of how talented she had always been but calling her a genius was an overstatement. You're exaggerating, aren't you? Not at all. You see, taking control of one object took me a whole week but you did it on your first try, he exclaimed and dropped all the objects. Sayla uncharacteristically threw a fist in the air. I'm amazing. Naruto dropped his eyes down into hers. You are amazing. Sayla stared back, mouth slightly opened. Her face grew a tinge of red, and she averted her eyes away from him. She wasn't ready to deal with the feeling spreading across her chest. She had not expected him to compliment her the way he just did. Especially since his best compliment usually consisted of, you are weird, or, you're a strange person. To her surprise, Naruto leaned down, a few inches from her face. She flinched back at his sudden gesture, increasing her blush. She froze on the spot as the blonde teen observed her face. He gently placed his hand on her forehead, checking for her temperature. Your face is red, are you feeling all right? Our little training was probably harder than I thought for you, he asked in a concerned voice. Sayla nodded repeatedly, reassuring there was no problem. I'm totally fine. Are you sure? We will continue then, he inquired, taking one final look before continuing with the rest of the training. This time, instead of just making it float, try and send it toward me at full speed. I can definitely try. Here it comes. Sayla stood up and positioned herself. In a single movement, she launched one of the objects as fast as she could commend. Not bad at all. The blonde commented, catching the object thrown at him. Keep going with the rest, throw them faster. Sayla proceeded to toss everything at the blonde, one by one as fast as she could. Each time she would do so, Naruto would simply return it to her using his own telekinesis. They both kept at it for a good 15 minutes without stopping. Subconsciously, Sayla began to take control of multiple objects all at once and Naruto couldn't help but grin at how much she was progressing without even noticing. It was only a matter of time until she finally exerted her control on all the objects using her mind only. Perfect. Keep your focus, he ordered. Understood. Sayla was breaking a sweat, struggling to maintain her momentum. Her mind was set to keep going for as long as Naruto wanted. Sadly for her, it didn't last long before she stopped because a major pain emerged on her temples. Her legs gave out, causing her to drop on her knees and she began panting heavily. Her arms followed right after and fell limp on her sides. It was almost as if all the energy she had suddenly vanished out of her body. Despite that, she still found enough strength to clutch her head in pain. There was no doubt in her mind that she had overdone herself without realizing it. This isn't good. Naruto rushed in no time and kneeled down next to Sayla. He gave a few pats on her back in an attempt to help her feel better. However, Sayla's body began to heat up, and eventually she couldn't see. Her breathing became shallower and she tried to catch a breath but it was a futile effort. And it wasn't long before she began to wheeze. There, there, take slow, even breaths. Naruto murmured, eyebrows furrowing in concern. Her eyes were unfocused as she tried to follow his instructions, her fingernails dug into the soft grass of Earthland. She began to censored in large gulps of air, opening her mouth as wide as she possibly could. Drool slowly ran down her chin, pooling between her clenched fingers. Finally her breathing slowed and her cheeks gradually began to regain their pinkish color. Feeling a bit better. She shakily wiped her chin with the back of her hand and looked up at him. What just happened? She coughed yet again, 
gripping tightly Naruto's sleeve in her small wet fingers. You've used up all your magic power. Naruto briefly explained. This is my fault, I forced you to push past your limits. He reached down his backpack and grabbed his water container, unscrewing it and handing it to her. When it became obvious that she wouldn't be able to drink, he carefully brought the canteen up to her mouth and titled it so that some of the cool liquid could seep into her mouth. It took her another few swallows of water, but she was eventually able to calm down enough to continue. But I still managed to pull it off, right? Naruto looked confusedly at her. She wasn't concerned in the slightest anymore about her previous condition but rather her training's progress. You still have a lot to learn but you pretty much got all the basics. I'm glad. She sighed aloud, lying on her back and sweating profusely with a huge smile on her face. Let's take a break. You might have been training for less than an hour but it was very intense. Naruto joined her, back against the smooth grass. As they both were lying on the grass, Sayla found herself pondering about Naruto again. Somehow, she still wasn't satisfied with the answers he gave her earlier. There was definitely more to what he was implying and she was sure of it. He was full of mysteries and she couldn't help but feel intrigued. Thinking back, she still remembered vividly the first time Naruto attended her parents' orphanage. They were both very young at the time, he was 12 and she was 11. It was so memorable because he got into a fight the very same day with another boy who was older than him. Sayla giggled at the memories of him, all beaten up but still grinning foxily over his victory. Back then, Naruto was a mischief and always got into troubles, but somehow was respected by the rest of the orphans because he was the strongest. From her memories, Naruto stayed with them a few months at the orphanage, and yet they never interacted once with each other. She was always busy helping her parents with chores and couldn't make time to actually befriend anyone. Actually, there were a few times she played with the other kids, but it was rather short interactions, therefore she wasn't able to build a proper friendship with anyone. Unfortunately, those happy times were cut short, and Naruto was taken away by the villagers which led to that tragedy. Sayla inwardly bit her lips in anger, she hated to recall the event that made her life changed forever. Right after the death of her parents, the rest of the orphans were transferred to a household for laboring while she was sent to work as a housemaid for the villagers' chief, Mr. Wilfred. As for Naruto, she'd heard about his true identity that same day too. At the time she did not believe a single word coming from the villagers saying he was a demon. To her, Naruto was nothing but an ordinary guy but it turned out it wasn't the case. In fact, ever since she was little, she often heard a well-known rumor about demons living inside a sealed cave on the outskirts of the village, and that no one dared to enter that area. Everyone used to say the place was cursed and should anyone even come near it they would die. Eventually, she came to realize that the first day Naruto was introduced to the orphanage, her parents, coincidentally, had traveled and came back from that prohibited area. And so, for seven years after that incident, she continued working for Mr. Wilfred as a maid. As much as she hated working for the bastard responsible for the death of her parents, she had no option since she was living rent-free as long as she provided him services. Also, she was a helpless kid back then, so there was possibly no way she could have fend for herself. In depth of her mind, she was well aware the man feared she would take revenge on him for executing her parents, which is why he constantly tried to lecture her for years. He was actually keeping tabs on her to make sure she couldn't go out of line. Within the years she spent working for him, the man and the villagers were always telling her that Naruto was the actual reason why her parents were killed in the first place. He was the one that placed a curse on her parents. To be honest, she believed it at first, and even came to hate Naruto for a decent period of time. However, as she matured she figured that all of it was pure bullshit. Naruto was just a scapegoat, he was not the one to blame even if her parents committed a crime by taking care of him. If anything, the village simply could have exiled them. There was no need to resort to such cruelty. The mere thought made her clench her fist in anger, wishing she could have taken some revenge on him before departing along with Naruto. No, this is wrong. She internally shook her head in disapproval. She shouldn't have such thoughts, especially because it stood against her morals. That's right, she swore an oath from the moment her parents died that she'd embrace their beliefs and make it hers. She would never seek revenge and resort to evil deeds. She was inspired to be just like her parents, reaching out to people in need in any ways she could. And of course, she also wished her blonde partner could follow the same path. Though, unlike her, Naruto was filled with so much hatred that he could not part with. All the pain he endured throughout those years changed him. 
she could easily tell he had lost faith in people or in anything whatsoever. He hated almost everything besides kicking asses and eating ramen. As she told him, his mind was constantly haunted by the past, unable to move forward. Thus, he had no goals in life nor looked forward to anything. Though, she felt somewhat hypocritical, because she was very similar to him in that regard. However, unlike him, she was willing to move forward and had plenty of goals in life. The past is the past, the future awaits. Naruto, can you tell me more about yourself? She abruptly asked out of the blue. EHH? Naruto looked at her with suspicion in his eyes at the sudden question. I feel as if you're not telling me the whole truth. She repeated in a serious tone, yet curious face. Naruto momentarily paused, thinking on how he should respond to her question. Hum. Of course, you don't have to answer me now if you don't want to. She averted her eyes from him. She felt stupid for asking him that. Especially since she knew how tense Naruto could get whenever a topic like this was brought up. But to her surprise, he wasn't annoyed at all. No, no, I was just thinking I'd have to tell you eventually. The blonde shook his head. I have a connection with Zarif. He finally said after a full minute of hard thinking. Zarif. But he lived 400 years ago. There's no way he could still be alive. Sayla exclaimed, visibly confused at the revelation. Sayla, Zarif is an immortal, he's still alive I'm sure of it. Naruto spoke up and could tell she wanted to know more. He truly didn't want to reveal anything to her about himself but he knew she would keep on pestering him about it anyways. He and I used to know each other, it was around 400 years ago. I don't believe you. Sayla looked at Naruto in disbelief. You said you suffered from amnesia and couldn't remember anything about your childhood. You're talking nonsense. Are you telling me you suddenly remember everything now? It's the truth but I still have few memories of the past. Naruto continued. Thing is, I don't remember my parents at all, friends, nor my childhood. All I seem to remember is that Zarif and I were very close. Even to this day I still feel connected to him, he's out there somewhere. Are you also telling me you lived 400 years ago when you grew up most of your life in our old village? Sayla uttered as she sat up. On top of that, you claim to be a demon but I can see that you're aging at the pace of any ordinary human. It is nothing but the truth, 400 years ago I was somehow alive. Naruto remained silent for a moment before speaking. Listen, I told you all I could remember was waking up near the village in a cave with your parents by me. At that time I could not remember a single thing about me. It was as if all my memories were gone, but as years went by, I slowly began regaining a few memories of my past. It's not much but I can safely say that I was in fact alive for 400 years. I have a hard time believing you. Zarif is an evil being, his legacy and creations still haunts Earthland to this day. For you to say you knew him personally makes me feel uneasy. Sayla wrapped her arms around her knees and frowned. I'm aware of the evil deeds he's done, I'm not as clueless as I appear. Naruto said, crossing his arm. But, I don't really care at all. Naruto, I've been thinking, did it never occur to you once to leave the village to find out more about your past and how you ended up in this era? Surely you must have thousands of unanswered questions. Of course there was plenty of time I wanted to leave to find out the truth about myself. I'm sure Zarif has all the answers to my questions. Naruto stood up and sighed heavily. But let's be real. I don't expect anyone to know anything about Zarif since he's dead, anyways. You're right. No one will be able to help you anyways, Sayla commented. So you will not seek Zarif? Sayla asked, voice coming out unsure than she'd wanted it to. As much as I'd like to meet him to ask him what the hell's going on, I'd have to pass on that. If I see him good, if I don't then so be it. Naruto replied uninterested. Anyways, that's too much of a hustle and I'm sure with time all my memories will eventually come back. Naruto stated in confidence as he remembered the dream he had this morning about his mother. I know I already asked you earlier, but are you really not a creation of Zarif? Sayla asked in a serious tone. Huh. Of course I'm not. Naruto exclaimed. Still, Sayla was unconvinced. She knew Naruto wasn't telling her the exact truth. I know you won't tell me everything right off the bat, but I want you to know that you can tell me anything. Naruto stared down at her a little surprised at how she could see right through him every time. You're so worried about me all the time. Isn't that what friends are for? Sailor replied back right away. Friends? Naruto processed the word for a second before grinning at her in appreciation. Whatever. Let's keep going with your training. You had enough rest I think. 
I can definitely keep going until nighttime. Sayla claimed as she stood up, ready to take on her next task. That's what I like to hear. Naruto shouted back. Naruto and Sayla walked side by side, neither one speaking or even looking at each other. Both were content with the training session they had just finished. The night was coming and Sayla was completely exhausted while Naruto seemed to be in perfect condition. I didn't think you could learn telekinesis after one session. But, you still have a few things to work on, like distance management. Naruto broke the silence between them, instantly catching her attention. How long until I master it completely? Sayla asked. Hum, I think in two days. You learn super fast after all. Naruto pondered, rubbing his chin. Yeah, yeah, two days should do it. Naruto glanced over at Sayla, who seemed overjoyed. He still couldn't believe how gifted she was. She had all the qualities to become a fearsome wizard one day. Her potential and raw talent was far beyond his own. He was certain in a few months from now that she could catch up on years of training. Projection magic might take a couple weeks for her. Sayla felt uncomfortable as Naruto kept looking her way intensively. She quickly glanced back at him and turned her gaze away. What could he be thinking about? Is he looking at my hair perhaps? Has he finally noticed it? She felt hopeful as her cheeks reddened at the thought. And Naruto, is everything all right? Oh yeah. I was thinking about you. Naruto replied in a monotone voice. I is that so? Sayla stuttered, trying her best to sound as calm as possible despite her face burning red. Does he like me as well? Wait, did I just admit that I like Hai? I was thinking how strong you will become after our training, Naruto exclaimed. Eh. Sayla blankly stared at him in disappointment. Of course, this was Naruto. He couldn't possibly find any interest in her besides her strength and capacities. Besides that he would easily toss her away the moment she becomes a burden. She felt stupid for thinking there was even a slight small chance for him to think about her that way. I'm so stupid. We've arrived. Naruto opened the entrance door of the shelter, nodding slightly at the clerk, Akemi. How was your date? Akemi teased when she caught Sayla walking right behind Naruto. It went well. Sayla replied. See? What did I say? She clapped her hands together and smiled. You were right. Sayla lied through her teeth, which went completely unnoticed. We will be resting for the night now. She nodded at the clerk and followed Naruto upstairs into their bedroom. Let's sleep. I'm so tired. Naruto tossed away his pants to sleep in shorts and jumped on the queen sized bed. Sayla, amused, shook her head at his childish behavior. She wondered for a second what to do for a while as Naruto tried to fall asleep. She sniffed herself and decided she needed to bathe, badly. With that thought in mind, she found her pack and fresh clothing and walked out of their room to take a dip in the hot spring. She was beyond exhausted and was in need of nothing but a warm bath to help her relax. Naruto watched as Sayla came back from her bath, noticing her sluggish and tired movements. He'd been secretly watching over her as they traveled, worrying over her every time she looked fatigued. As she stood at the window and stared at the night sky outside, Naruto felt his hitch on the back of his throat. Amazingly, he hadn't noticed before how beautiful her hair was. Her dark purple hair, lit up by the moonbeam gave her the appearance of some angelic deity. Her long flowing hair, almost reaching the subtle curve of her back and bottom, seemed to glow with ethereal energy. It hadn't been like this before, at least, he didn't think so. Naruto quickly turned away and pretended to be asleep when Sayla faced their bed. The last thing he wanted was for her to see him admiring her. Hell, he rather died. Sayla sat down next to him. She stared at his face for a couple minutes, smiling at how different he looked when he was asleep. Since he had yet to get a haircut something she'd rectify once they get to the next town, his hair was spread widely around his head, forming a strange mixture between a halo and a lion's mane. She ran her fingers through the thick mass blonde, remembering the last time she'd done this was a few days ago. His hair was still unruly as it had been, if not a little softer. She gently patted his head and slipped under the blanket. She'd thought about changing into some night clothes before going to sleep but that plan was immediately forgotten when she had made the mistake of lying down under the sheets. It's not like it mattered much, after all, the long white shirt and black spandex shorts were pretty comfortable in any situation. Good night, Naruto. She said in a soft voice. Night. Naruto mentally replied back, blushing, processing what just happened. Sayla, wake up, wake up. Sayla pressed her hands over her ears in an attempt to block out any sound, 
but it was no use. She gradually began to wake up and noticed Naruto placing his finger over his mouth, gesturing to her to remain quiet as much as possible. Don't make any noises. Sayla nodded in understanding and whispered. What's the matter? Looks like a demon has come to greet us. Naruto answered as he looked outside the window. Thanks.